Hello, everybody. We are getting ready very soon to start this show. Let's set that there. Go to that volume. Okay, let's test this. Actually, let's we'll hit that real quick. Yep. 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 Okay. That sounds yep. good. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but yep. Okay. All right. Yes. I don't know what else I have to do other than tweet. I think yeah, we're good. I think we're good. Okay. Well, I'll do that real quick and then we'll get started. Yes. We're coming. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like it. Nick, I'm glad you Still like speak a game. Unlike <laughs> some people. Unlike some other tasteless cretins. Oh, right. <laughs> you have some sweet <laughs> things to say about it. It was like the thesis for your whole ideology about what games you like. I was like, yeah, I don't care for it. <laughs> <laughs> and that pretty much sums it up. Yeah. That's, <laughs> <laughs> that's like, yeah, not really my thing. Uh, apparently, I got Nick's entire family hooked on it, though. So there, there we go. go. Hell yeah. Uh, okay. Tweet. I did everything right. I'm sorry. And they indicted me. <laughs> no, you're not. Yeah, that's all right. <laughs> I was just, I was trying to scroll and I clicked by accident. Just checking the somebody put new all your new, new sounds on the soundboard. Um, ba, 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 bum, bum, ba, da, bum, ba, bum, bum. I was making like some rice and I put too much, too much sesame seed oil in. So then I had to. Try to put in some like agave nectar, some sweetness effects, and I put too much of that in. So then I put in some Worcestershire sauce, and it, it mostly saved it. Mostly saved it. But it was a harrowing moment there. Oh, glad you lived through it. <laughs> that's awesome. That's a uh, yep. What sauce? I was just making a sauce. I just was. I just have a walk, and I had some. Leftover beef from the holidays and some rice. Let's just try to make something. My your list is coming up. Yes, it is. Jeff lost it. I had to resend it, but it was okay because uh, I was able to actually go through it again and make it good this time. Because last time when I was doing it, it was like one of 30 things I was doing before the break. So I appreciate it. I not a chance to go oh, yeah. through it again. I just, uh, I'm finishing up mine uh, now. Um, apparently, if you search for images from the site, it deletes mm -hmm. them from the wiki if you use them. So wait, what? <laughs> yeah, it's a bug. Uh, so instead, just copy the URL and then re-upload that, like as like a URL URL source, and then that'll cool. that'll work fine. Very cool. Yes, okay. cool <laughs> stuff yeah. over on the CMS, everybody. Wow, uh, I can't believe this website that's probably been running on the same code for like fifteen years is kind of weird. It seems well, like that, that should yeah. yeah entropy should not affect websites. <laughs> I think the work that those people did back then is incredible, and that side works uh, fine, but it sometimes has like some, you know, hitches here and there. Well, nobody did anything Thank wrong. You. It's just it's old. Thank you. And um, vote me for president. I think ready? we what are ready. I was trying to say it. Yes, we're ready. Uh, are you what ready? Are you doing? What's ready? wrong with you? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. A lot. A lot. I'm gonna ask I thought, you I thought sometimes. You were telling me. I am curious what happens in these like three minutes between what I think you're ready and then we actually go. What are what are you what's he up to? Um, he most saw of something is shaped different I, I, than yeah, you. Something, you uh, something shiny. <laughs> yeah, you uh, saw it shiny. <laughs> I'm like making sure that like I have uh the proper stuff open so I can like actually run the show in the middle so I don't have to do it later. Like I got the okay. The sheet open from you. 2011. No, you don't. All right. Uh, let's start the show. I'm going to count us in uh, one more time. You ready, ready, Mike? Yes. Okay. Uh, here we go in five, four, three. internet you're busy let's do this welcome to the game mess decides podcast this is the podcast where we decide everything about the world of games so you never have to think for yourself i'm your host jeff grubb with me is mike minotti in today's episode uh, 2024 is happening we're going to talk about some of those games we got the best games of 2011 as well 
I've been playing a few things here and there. I'm going to ask Mike the same thing. We'll get to all of that. But first, Mike, how are you doing? Good. Yeah. Uh, holidays have happened. Uh, I've been picking it pretty easily since then, trying to really rest, uh, recuperate, playing a few things. But yeah, not bad. The Browns are playing. I think I'm going to like really pay attention to that and interject while you're talking about the score sometimes. That's fine with me. <laughs> <laughs> How was your Christmas, Jeff? Uh, it was pretty good. It was good. It was busy. Uh, uh, yeah. The kids got a ton of stuff and it was... um. Now it's kind of like, okay, where is all this stuff going to go? So it might yes. be time to like swap out some old things and uh, do some spring cleaning here very soon and early spring cleaning. Um, but yeah, it was, it was good. The, uh, the, the funniest part was Addie was being really impatient and I'm like, is she just being four years older? Is there something going on? And she was like running ahead and like opening up the next present. Like she was looking for something and we're like, what, what, like what's going on? She's like, I'm looking for Piku Niku because she asked every single Santa, uh, right. That she saw the one thing she wanted, Piku Niku, which is from the game Piku Niku Devolver Digital. And so we're like, we were going to save it for last. I'm like, we can't, we got to give it to her now. Grandma made her Piku and Niku. Uh, hopefully she doesn't watch this because we said Santa brought it. Uh, she's asleep right now, everybody. We're good. Uh, <laughs> she, so the grandma brought it and it was, uh, it was, they looked great. Uh, but w w so we hand it to her so she can open. Like Santa said, give this to her special. And she opens it. And then she basically breaks down with happy tears crying because she was so relieved that she got her Piku Niku. Oh my goodness. And now it's been like the number one gift all uh, ever, ever since. She's been playing with them nonstop. It was like uh, a pretty good moment. And then Emmy's just been kind of happy with everything although they got, they got, there was i know she wanted an astro also there's no problems there uh there was uh, there was no problems not having it yes because she was very she was very focused on the piku niku astro was kind of like a bonus i think she might have mentioned astro to like a santa here or there but it's been yeah, peak, sure, all piku, piku niku. niku yes was the important thing of course yes but uh, astro is actually someone um i mentioned this this problem someone pointed out to me that fan gamer does have a astro plush i've ordered that and her birthday is in january so yeah, well, there you go then so there okay. we go. Exactly. So but, uh, she'll get, into, get it done. What did you get for Christmas, Jeff? I got I don't care about the, your children. Yeah, I got the thing I asked for. My, my hiking boots. Uh, I got okay. two pairs of hiking boots, actually. So I'm pretty wow. excited about that. Every day after I drop the kids off at school, I go hiking. And uh, uh, like this is like a two and a half mile trail. It's not anything intense. Um, but I was getting kind of like, oh, it's getting be wintry time, winter time. I want something that's going to have better grip just in case. And uh, something a little bit more comfortable and sturdy. So... Yeah, I asked Steph for some hiking boots, and she got me a couple pairs. She got me a pair of Columbia boots. They're really nice. I'm like, I'm kind of just wearing them all the time now, and I'm like, ah, it's not what I meant to do, but I can't help it. Uh, and then I got a really sharp knife. <laughs> I've been playing with that a lot. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Maybe playing's the wrong word. Um, yeah, I, I, I actually use that all day to like open all the presents and stuff. Like there was, you know, can we get this thing out of the box right now? I'm like, okay. I'm like, oh yeah, let me get my knife, and that was a lot of fun. And it's very, very sharp. So. That was All pretty right, exciting. Right. Yeah. How about you? Uh, well, I got a new suitcase. You saw that my suitcase during our trip in LA was. I on did its witness last leg. the I, death of a suitcase. Yes. Yeah, it did burst open, so I had to buy tape to get it home. So, I have a new suitcase. So uh, that's good. A AJ got me this uh, Iron Maiden Metroid Mash. That's shirt. really good. That's, yes. Yes, that's fun. That's fun. Uh, Chris got me. It has, hasn't come in quite yet. Uh, uh, nose waxing kit oh, okay very, he did that and i saw it and i was so jealous like that looks amazing i want to wax my nose i can't <laughs> wait there's so much hair in there it's so annoying and he like showed me like the paper afterwards and there's just all these really long strands of nose hair yeah just, this got to be really satisfying oh i was like i was like lord i want that for me <laughs> so, you know, so i'm uh, very excited to get that but yeah i got, got a lot of uh other nice stuff got a ducktales art book which uh Ooh please me also from uh father so yeah yeah it was nice i i i also got um have you, i don't know have you watched uh thank you for leaving or whatever it is that show on netflix that gets uh quoted all the yeah. time uh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. You know, we're all looking for the guy who did this. So. Yes, exactly. So, uh, sloppy steaks. Yes, yeah, Steph got me. I the, think you should leave. I think is the name. I, I think you should leave. Thank you. I uh, think you for leaving is uh, whatever that that other game or something. Thank you lines. for smoking. Thank yes. you for leaving. Like um, it is. Uh, I think you should leave. Yes, I, Dan Flashes. She got me a Dan Flashes shirt. Uh, so I'm gonna be wearing that on my first episode of Game Mess Mornings back because the pa the patterns are so complicated, and I'm very excited to just like wear that and not say anything about it. And see what the see what everyone says so yeah a lot of cool stuff uh, a lot of just like you know typical dad gifts of 
oh yeah here's uh another multi-tool and uh another like things sure. like that yes so you need those things yeah right? i hey they always get used for me for sure right My, right uh, you know what? Let's do the, qu- the the credits, and then we will uh, get into what we're going to do today. Uh, hey, everybody. Thanks for listening. You get more from Mike and me by joining the Discord at GameMess.net. Give us a good rating wherever you are listening, and hit that like button on YouTube. It helps people find the show. If you want to ask a question, you could drop a super chat during the show here on YouTube. We will get to all of them before the end of the program. Thanks to Carlos Ayin, who is insane in the rain music on YouTube for the use of our theme songs. Thanks to 1UP versus CPU for our artwork. You can find more of him, more of him at 1UP versus CPU.com. We are on Spotify, Google Podcast, Apple Podcast, and wherever pods are caught. Thank you to the mods and support us by going to patreon.com slash game mess. That gets you access to the private channels in our Discord, the monthly Q&A, participation in our monthly game club discussions, one month early access to new episodes of Game Mess Jeopardy and Columbros, and of course, all of our shows ad free. Um, right, we did we did put the uh, early Columbros out on Christmas Day this time, though. So you yes, can we did. up with Columbros right now. You saw. We've done four or five episodes of Columbus. I think it was the point. fifth episode. Yeah, I think it was the fifth one. I think that was one. the fifth one already. Wow. Man, yeah. man, that five flew episodes, by. Yeah, yeah, yeah flew five. by. There we go. So, yeah, it's, uh, if you, uh, a lot of those episodes are free online. So, if you want to like, go catch oh, those. Oh, touchdown, yeah. Browns. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm rooting for the Browns. I really am. I want them to do well. Is it wait, Joe Flacco still playing good? Like, oh, yeah. Hell yeah, man. Yeah, I'm like right? so it's excited about Joe Flacco being back. You're really excited about Joe Flacco going to the Super Bowl. I would uh, be, yes. That'd be inc- inc- no, incredible no, no, no. for him to uh, take the Browns after winning a Super Bowl with the Ravens. I would uh, love it, yeah. All right, like, We kind of deserve that from the Ravens. To be yeah, honest. yeah, they owe you that, absolutely. <laughs> it's considering that they used to be the Browns. Right, for people who don't that. know, the Browns moved to Baltimore and became the Ravens, and then you just didn't have football in Cleveland for a couple yeah. years. Right, yeah, then the Browns became an expansion team. <laughs> it yes, was real God, weird. that was real weird. Uh, but they're back, and now one of the best teams in the league. It's going to be scary, actually, if uh, weird, the Lions have to go actually. up against them. So, yeah. That'd be fun, though. Oh, we would do something. <laughs> yeah, and there's <laughs> like, know- the thing is, uh, fandom's got, like, a, a bug up their butt about the Super Bowl, like they feel like, oh, the Super Bowl—that's really important for us. I'm like, it is, uh, but, <laughs> but so, sometimes, like Lucy got sent to like Super Bowl related stuff last year, oh my God. and it, and if there's any chance, I'm like, I'll do that this year. <laughs> if there's yeah, any yeah, chance yeah, the yeah, Lions are there, how nice of you to go. Yes, to exactly. We'll see. We will see. I mean, because it's like I'll have to like interview celebrities, and that's just not. I don't. I couldn't care less about that stuff. So, but I'll do it. Yeah, but you could do it. I could do it exactly. I'll do it if I have to. So, yeah. Uh, Mike, not a lot happened in terms of news this week. So, uh, why don't we just take a look at what's happening next year instead? That seems like a better use of our time. What do you say? Absolutely. Yeah, I've been thinking about next year a lot. I know that's really unique of me to do that at the end of the year to like think forward a that little bit. That is what sets you apart. It's one of the reasons I wanted to work with you so bad. <laughs> I'm like, this guy's <laughs> always looking forward. Me? <laughs> wait, wait, what did you say about me today? Oh, I don't uh, remember. I hate that Mike's right so often, but he is or something. Some, I saw basically, what you said. something like that. Yeah, I don't know. I saw what you said about me in your top 10 list. <laughs> like, I, it's a, I hate to admit he could be right, but yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Um, hey, uh, so why were you thinking about next year? Like, is there something like that sticks out or is there a, a dearth of games? I'm what is scared. It? <laughs> yeah, a little I'm bit. I'm worried. I don't know what it is. Like, like something about uh, some of the, the, the layoffs and then some of the things we found out about how expensive games are. I'm like, what if this is the last good year <laughs> ever? Uh, yeah, okay. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous. I know. I think that there is a sea change coming, but it probably isn't like a, a macro level shift in how it. Okay. I am thinking about making a video uh, for, for YouTube here over this yeah. break where it's like, uh, hey, I do think PlayStation has officially won the console war, but what now? Like, what What now? Like, what do you do with that? Like, you won, and it's like, the growth isn't obviously any, like, there. Like, to what end has this a victory set them up right. for the future? And it's like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, and no one knows. So it's um, kind of, it, it, that, that aspect of it does make it feel precarious. Where it's like, we should be at a point where, like, Sony's, like, got all this momentum going for them. And instead, we have more questions and answers on a lot of, like, what what is next. And so that makes me worried as well. Now... They'll they'll come up with answers. And overall, I think games, great games are going to keep coming out from the woodworks all over the place. We're going to be just fine. 
But if you got accustomed to playing games a certain way over the years, I do think it's going to keep shifting away from like what we're used to. And you might have to like seek games out from different places going forward. And that's, that's fine. I don't necessarily right. think it's going to start wholesale in 2024, but 2024 might be a little bit of a preview of that in terms of maybe we won't get a lot of big games from the established, you know, first parties at the very least, you know, there are always a chance for them. To, there's always a chance for them to surprise us, but we just don't know right now. I don't know. What are you thinking? Yeah, I think you're right. And I'm probably overreacting. And of course, it's not going to be as good as 2023. There's just no way. Uh, 2023 was ridiculous. In some ways, that'll be nice. Um, I could use more time spent playing more retro games or even just playing yeah, the games same. I like for longer. Like, I wish I could have spent more time with like Street Fighter 6, really. Um, so, you know, if Tekken 8 comes out and that's the only thing I'm playing for a bit, that'd be great. Although the beginning of the year is actually looks a little stacked. Because uh, you have things like Infinite Wealth. Yes. And, and that looks uh, really good. Yeah. What, so what is like your number one? What is the game you're looking the most forward to? Uh, to and what was it last year, if you can remember? Going oh, into I, last year? God, I don't remember. Um, What did we know about back then? Jesus. Was it? Because there was, we knew I mean, Starfield I mean, it was, was coming. You know, obviously knew... it was Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, Starfield yeah, was definitely right. up there. Yes. It was probably Starfield number well, two. I remember Starfield, we didn't know that much about until that's it true. had that yeah, amazing that's showcase. True. Right. Yeah. That was right, like my biggest we question like, mark then, where I'm like, I'm definitely the most curious about Starfield, but I don't know if I'm excited about it yet. And then that changed with Summer Game Fest. Um, hang on, I'm going to get the list of... Uh, game, GameSpot had yeah, a good just, 2024 well, so, list. I mean, last year, I think I said my 2023 game I was looking most forward to was Final Fantasy 16, which, you know, I like. But which you, you know, hate. Obviously, for the fact that I haven't beaten it yet, yeah, it's, it's not like it exactly blew my mind or anything, right? Right, yeah. I mean, uh, listen, it's. I think it'll be one that gets a bit of a... Uh, a, a, a second chance later on when people are like reconsidering things, but not like, oh, it's, suddenly it's going to be everyone's favorite Final Fantasy. That's just not going to happen with that game. Um, now, yeah. Having said that, I sure am looking forward to Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, so am I. That's up there for me. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is, uh, I have a lot of fun with Final Fantasy VII Remake. I've said before, I never finished it. I'm okay with that. Um, the combat is just so good. Uh, that I'm like very excited to see how they up that system next time because they, it's a continuation. Like the, they kind of can't yeah. reset you all that much. It's got to be a little bit like uh, Jedi Survivor, where it's going to carry forward a lot of that stuff and get even bigger. I think that's going to be good for the game. Yeah, I think agreed. The Final Fantasy games have gotten a little bit too weird with the whole every game has to be a big reinvention because it was not like that. Like Final Fantasy one, two, and three were very similar. Then four changed the battle system a little bit with the ATB stuff. Then they basically used that through nine, right? Like four to nine with slight differences here and there. And those are a lot of people's favorite ones ever still. Sure. Four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine. Um, so like maybe we should pick a battle system and elaborate on that, or even like an engine <laughs> elaborate on that mm -hmm. for a while instead of just reinventing that wheel every time. Um, you know, maybe a maybe a Final Fantasy 16 or a Final Fantasy numbered game that is just built off of Final Fantasy 7 remake stuff, but with original characters and whatnot would be uh really cool. Or heck, even build it off of 16. That's fine too. But build it off of something instead of really starting over from scratch. Yeah, so, I get that these games take longer, so it's like uh um maybe part of them is like, well, we gotta be uh, resetting more of the expectations with different stuff each time. It's like, no, I, people understand that they take longer now and they actually want to have that uh, investment that they put into learning a battle system carry forward a little bit, I think. so. John, do you really have a problem with what I said? It's really? just a weird thing to say. Like, Final what Fantasy has always about? been about change. Like, they change it every, like, five years pretty consistently. Like, since maybe you've been an, uh, an adult, you child. No, <laughs> think about the time between games, Mike. It's like what roughly I, five years. Yeah, yeah consistently. I mean, yeah, five I years. Talking, yeah, but I said from like four to nine, they didn't do that. And those are still mostly everyone's favorites in a large way, like 10. Sure, and that, but, that was probably about, about, about like a five to what, eight that, year that period. Was, that was an extended period. Yes, but that, that was more well, like Yeah, but I think years, the point is, but, yeah, the, I think the, the point, point is, is it's constantly yeah. changing. The point is, is like they probably should uh, not look at like the amount of years and instead look at a maybe closer to the number of entries and be like, we could do more of this over the next couple of entries, even if that is a 10 to 15 year period. Uh, Cause they, the, the, the thing is that they have going for them right now is they have so many different tiers and, and, and tracks of final fantasy. They can mess around with stuff in final fantasy 14 constantly. They can do stuff in remake 
and then they can do stuff with whatever 17 is going to be and then they can like change things up that way but if it's like a clearly final fantasy 7 uh, rebirth is going to build on remake and that's a good thing I, one of the reasons i'm excited about it is to get back to that battle system that we played several years ago now so yeah um i'm i don't know i'm excited for it i, I think it's probably going to be like even better in terms of because people really like to remake. I think this one's really going to build on that and be better in a lot of ways for a lot of people. I uh, hope so. There is a part of me that thinks maybe remake was really well positioned to be amazing because it can be a bit more contained. The beginning of Final Fantasy seven is, I think, the best part in a lot of ways. But yeah, um, you know, they are they do get to build up on something here. There still are a lot of great moments in rebirth and maybe they do kind of make the openness of it work in a way again i'm not expecting open world or anything they probably open zone clarified exactly everyone's works, copying sonic everyone's cop open zone <laughs> exactly yep. god that was so annoying <laughs> I, I don't know i'll never forget when i caught open world and like the sonic guy corrected me <laughs> said it was open, so i wanted to go i was polite <laughs> but i wanted to be like okay <laughs> Uh, yeah, my uh, my early uh, like most anticipated game is Prince of Persia: The Lost Crown, mm -hmm. which I am hoping to get very quickly at the beginning of the next year, so I can just start working on that game. Uh, hey, Prince of Persia, but it's like more of a Metroidvania, uh, and it still has awesome sort of uh, uh, wall running and gameplay and and and, and, and you know um, cool platforming stuff. Yeah, I want that real bad. I played this game. We both have. Really liked what I played of it. Uh, re really looking forward to getting more of it. So, yeah, this is my early favorite coming out of the gate. I mean, I haven't really been able to talk about it yet, but I played four hours of this game. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Preview. And it's fantastic. It's great. I, like, you know, four hours. Like, that's so long where I'm just about to say, yeah, this game's going to be good. Mm -hmm. I'm really excited for it. I mean, I just like Metroidvania's. I was readjusting my top 100 games list because uh, the year's coming to an end. There's probably like seven Metroidvanias in my top 100, right? That genre yeah. just like, it's kind of cheating with me. It just really works with me. Yep, I, I, I agreed. And I think it's a really good place for, for Prince of Persia to go. If they're not going to do a big 3D one, although big, a big 3D um, Prince of Persia that's also a Metroidvania, great idea. They should do that. Uh, but in the meantime, I mean, not even in the meantime, the Lost Crown is a completely valid and valuable thing to get on its own terms. And yep. I'm very excited about it. Um. I don't know. Well, how about what? What's next? Anything else that uh, stands out like January for you? I mean, I, yeah, Infinite Wealth. I mean, it was a big one. Infinite Wealth. Um, yeah, but that one's more like <clears throat> okay. I'll uh, I'll get into this and see what I think of it. I've I've never really gotten big in Yakuza or like a dragon. I liked like a dragon, um, but uh, kind of got distracted and pulled off it. But I do want to give Infinite Wealth a go. But I'm really excited for Tekken Eight. Yep, uh, that was another game I had a preview event before. I never really played that much Tekken, but I'm really liking fighting games a lot at the moment. And I'm kind of just ready to dive uh, all the way into this one and have myself a good time. Wait, Christian, why are you sad about Tekken? I'm getting distracted by our mods comments right. in the chat. What, what, <laughs> what, why are you sad about Tekken? Elaborate. Because because it's not going to have a rollback, so I'm fucked. Oh, because of the net code, right? right well, right. let's yeah, just go ask the developers if they'll put it in there. Oh, don't even i don't <laughs> i don't want to talk about that <laughs> i think they're very receptive to criticism and feedback about that i don't know what you're talking about uh i mean listen i'll play some tekken 8 i, I played a lot of tekken 7 when it first came out and really enjoyed it so and i've always loved tekken um and i'm glad that it's still chugging along and has a chance to kind of uh, get a little bit of, of the fighting game spotlight early next year and didn't get overwhelmed like overrun this year which it definitely pr probably would have happened um so there was an, another thing in January I wanted to call out. Uh, Apollo Justice Ace Attorney Trilogy. That one's for you. Are you going to play that? Well, I mean, it, I mean, those are all kind of long visual novels I've already played. It's okay. the thing, right? Like, uh, I maybe I played through the original three again because, I mean, those ones were, it was so long. And I really liked them. And I do like these three a lot. Uh, you know, if you played the original three and you haven't played these three yet, this is absolutely a must get for you. But it's not something I'm going to spend time uh, going back to necessarily, at least not right away. Uh, when it comes to Nintendo stuff, the Switch, uh, Mario versus Donkey Kong, I'm I'm interested. I am it, my, I know that like I don't think you are, but I am. No, I mean I don't know. I should be. I know it's so weird how we love Donkey Kong '94, and this is the direct sequel. And me and you, like you're a little bit nicer about me right now. You're like ready to give it a try. Yeah, and I'm kind of like yeah, it's gross though. <laughs> 
I'm hoping that, like, I can get over the grossness of the GBA game, which I do think is, like, something that's so off-putting about the way it moves and looks. Um, but, hey, they're they're redoing those visuals for this game, so maybe there, there's a chance that it'll work, but I don't know. There is still some of that aesthetic uh, holding over there. Um, I don't right, know. I gotta call Christian back in now. Now All chat's right. saying it, this game does have netcode, Christian. What do you have to say well, now? It has well, code, I'm sure it has netcode. I'm sure it has netcode, I mean. Oh, rollback, that's <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, that's rollback, that's rollback. Have. It, it uh, doesn't have roll. I mean, Harada said it had rollback, but he also said that Tekken 7 had rollback, and that game doesn't have any type of rollback whatsoever. So, okay. like, what is, what is the GG, GGPO or whatever? All right, hang on, hang on. Hang on. Let, me, let me diffuse the situation a little bit here. <laughs> diffuse quick this before is it explodes. The, this is the craziest situation that's happened in fighting games. Katsuhiro Harada does not know what rollback netcode is, <laughs> and he keeps insisting that his game has it, even though everyone's like, we, we're looking at it, we've like dug into it, we've done all these things. Like, it's it, the rollback may be in the game in some form in terms of like animation and everything, but you are not using what we refer to as rollback netcode as in predictive rollback netcode. So it's, it's the wildest thing they keep saying, no, it has a rollback when it just, it doesn't. All right. Situation properly diffused and explained. Thank you. Go back in your holes now. All right, Jeff. <laughs> What's that? Um, unicorn overlord, the vanilla wear game. Uh -huh fuck are you talking about <laughs> you know unicorn overlord no, I don't. <laughs> actually i think i said it you see unicorn overload or over it's uh from uh vanilla wear it's from uh whatchamacallit oh shit yeah. all right yeah those fuckos those fuckos yeah. you know i do like their shit don't you, i yes <laughs> Why am i swearing so much oh, i don't yeah, know yeah, I like those really blue today <laughs> those pieces of <laughs> those motherfuck those like that scum on the bottom of my shoe those uh, fucking cleavage weaves yeah those <laughs> yes guys. yeah the, the vagina bone inventors um <laughs> unicorn overlord looks cool because like all of their games look really cool yeah they look good uh, and it's uh march 8th actually so it's coming out early next year march 8th i got a, a couple of february games i want to talk about oh hit me with uh them. First off, you know what? I, I played that Graham Blue Fantasy versus Uprising Relink uh, 358 over two days, whatever it's called. Thing. That's it. Yeah, uh, that game was fun, man. That is, they, you talk about waifus. That game could just be called waifus, <laughs> right? There's a there's another Grand Blue thing coming out February first. Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. I think this is supposed to be the fantasy RPG uh, game now. So, I don't know. Maybe that'll be fun. Can you believe Suicide Squad killed <laughs> no, the Justice I League? My, it's my, just, that's going to be a real video game in a couple months. Is it like 2024 is going to be a little bit slower and you're just going to go full hog on anime games? Is this what's happening? Yeah, I think I'm going to be a yeah, I'm going to become a real anime pervert in okay. 2024. That's fair. Uh yeah, Suicide Squad. Uh same day as Persona 3 Reload. Um I guess I guess I'll probably play Suicide Squad first. Uh um but, like, yeah, I don't know. I just have no thoughts in my head for Suicide Squad anymore. Yeah, it'll be... I'll be very interested to see reviews for that one. Uh, I... I don't know what I... I don't know what I want to happen for sure. I guess I don't need to have once there. I don't know what even is a good scenario. I guess I guess the best scenario is the game just comes out and it's actually really good and we're all happy. But yeah. I, I just have a hard time seeing that possibility. Uh, who knows, though? Like you keep saying... Rocksteady makes fun games. How can the game not be fun? It probably How will could be. That it probably happen? will be. Yeah. It will probably will. But I am pretty excited for Persona 3 Reload. Um, Persona 3 is such a good game, such an important uh, RPG. This remake looks really nice. Even the things that bother people about it not having some of that other content. Neither is content that I particularly care about. I don't need the Fez kind of post-game epilogue thing. I don't really need the uh, female main character. I'm always going to play as the male main character in this game anyway. So that doesn't bother me in any uh, significant way. I'm excited to play this. I'm excited to see some new people try this game out. Um, I might give it a shot. We'll see. I know it's probably not for me, uh, but I always like giving games a shot anyhow. Uh, Hell Divers 2 a few days later. Um, yeah, I hope that's we had a lot of fun when we played that first one. Exactly. And I think uh, maybe, you know, getting in on the ground floor for Helldivers 2, there's a chance we could really get into it. Uh, I would like to give that a couple of couple of chances, a couple of like maybe streams on, on Giant Bomb. That could be a lot of fun. Uh, do you care about Tomb Raider 1 through 3 remastered? Maybe. I tried to play Tomb Raider 1 like on the on like Duck Station, right? Not too long ago. And, you know, I, I'm usually pretty good about 
quote unquote aged games. But even that one, yeah. I was like, all right, that's enough of that for for now. But hey, I mean, maybe there's improvements to be made. I I still think it's a good thing that this is happening. I will maybe I'll check it out and like go straight to two or three or something, which people you know say is better, anyways. Uh, and then this game is going to completely eat Final Fantasy VII Rebirth so lunch a day before it comes out. Star Wars Dark Force is remastered. That's neat that this is happening. Me too. Already, I'm really happy about this. I already really liked it when I played through, um, you know, the, the kind of fan uh, tool that already updated the game. But I'm excited to see what this more official version from Night Dive is going to look like. I mean, Dark Force is just a fantastic game. Yep. I was thinking about... Uh, the series a lot during the break for some reason. Uh, oh, yeah. Thinking about Dark Forces and Dark Forces 2 Jedi Knight and Dark Forces uh, 3 Jedi Knight 2 Jedi Outcast and Dark Forces 4 Jedi Knight 3 uh, Jedi Outcast 2 Jedi Academy. And it's just like, man, they had a really good thing going on there. Uh, you think just now they never would because of legacy stuff. But man, if there was a new Dark Forces, that'd be so neat. Uh, yeah. I mean, God, that'd be. I would like it just a sequel to the like original. I want it to be a shooter first. You're in a stormtrooper outfit, that sort of thing. But um, whatever. I would take anything in this series. I like Kyle Katarn as a character. I uh, got a couple of those books uh, that that Kyle Katarn yeah. was in. Um, I love Kyle Katarn. I mean, yep. Come on, just speak like you know how we we have freaking Jedi Survivor and like make a new big Star Wars shooter and have it just star freaking Kyle Katarn. Why not? You bring back Thrawn. Thrawn's back. Thrawn got brought in. We don't get Kyle Katarn. Come on. Come on. They'll, they'll bring him back and they'll ruin him. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> that, ooh. Oh, yeah. Maybe I don't want it to come back. I don't want I don't want to hear your thoughts about it for the next 10 years. <laughs> no, probably. I'll be very disappointed. Uh, although, hey, I'll, I'll take I'll take um, Dash Rendar back too. whatever. Ruin him. Fine. Whatever. You can't ruin Dash Rendar. That's the good yeah, news. What is there to ruin? Yeah, it's just it's, a himbo. Is exactly. <laughs> uh, Dragon's Dogma 2. Uh, that comes out on my birthday. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Nice, Arisons. <laughs> I'm really hopeful for this, man. Uh, I've not played a second of the first one, and I don't think I ever will. <laughs> but you don't need to. You don't need to. This. Don't go back. Don't back. Don't go back there. Like no, I'm not whatever going to. game that first game is for you and your brain it is perfect. Don't you don't have to check it. Out. <laughs> Fair yeah, enough. I'm excited. Uh, Princess Peach Showtime also on March 22nd. Like I'm not excited, but I will be interested to play it. If that yeah, makes I'm sense, I'm right? excited, like in hope that in the hopes that like my kids will be into it and we could play together. So we'll see. Um, man, so that Alone in the Dark reboot is supposed to happen March 20th, and I feel like we still don't know very much about that. Uh, really, but man, like you know, I've been playing the Dead Space remake now. Resident Evil 4 was so good. We had so many good survival horror games last year. I wonder if Alone in the Dark's going to continue that or basically just do what it's been doing for a long time where it just reappears every once in a while and uh people generally don't pay any mind yeah i mean i, I i'm not sure I, I we'll see um i just keep seeing skull and bones it's distracting me <laughs> i mean do we even have to pretend i mean i guess it's it has to actually come out this time right i mean come on just release it no matter what shape it's in at this point yeah, I mean, it, I, it can't right. be in worse shape than Redfall was when they just released that game. Right, like, just you're get allowed it, like, to release it. Yeah, just release it and like let it be bad. Who cares at this point? I'm, I'm like kind right. of like would rather that happen than have it keep haunting these release lists forever. <laughs> just get out of here. Release it. Um, let's see. Although I think there are like people playing it and like some players something and they they don't seem impressed. It's kind of just messed up. <laughs> Weird. After, like four reboots or everything else. Like, how did you? Couldn't find something. You couldn't find the fun somehow. Like, how was it not just actually um, uh, Assassin's, Assassin's Creed, Creed 4, Four? Yeah, like with the different, like without the Assassin's Creed lore, like that's all it needed to be. Yep. I, I mean, I, I get they wanted to make a multiplayer first, but I don't know Assassin's Creed Four, but kind of Sea of Thieves, but still more Assassin's Creed than that. I mean, yeah, worked it, themselves into the shoot. Yes, they did. Uh, David Harbor is like a big part of that out of that Alone in the Dark game. And I'm like, I, I don't know. I just, I do want to see it uh, for that stuff because it's like, what are all these celebrities doing in this game? But we'll see. You guys, you guys didn't really know much about Lone in the Dark on the Bombcast, and I just was fantasizing about the history lesson I would have given you all if I was there. <laughs> but I didn't uh, have a chance. Did you know the first, the first Lone in the Dark pre predates Resident Evil? Yes, everyone knows that. Well, you didn't seem to know it. At, on Are you your kidding show. me? A little, of course, Lone in the Dark is like, a, yeah, the, the first like well, survival horror like, game. I don't even know what this is. Just say, I say didn't that. say that. <laughs> I definitely did not say I well, don't I know what Alone in the Dark is. Why did you defend your 
your friend? <laughs> Why did you yell at your friend Jan <laughs> and explain to him? Well, because it's on the. I was with Backlar as well, and I knew it didn't register on the important scale, so that's wow. why. It was a, it's important to me. Damn it. <laughs> it's like yeah, it came out before Resident Evil, and it didn't matter either. It and just... why didn't you? Why didn't you, in my stead, my stead, assure Jan that Fantasia, Mezzo, whatever, is going to be more like Persona than Shin Megami Tensai? He's going to be fine. Oh, uh, because that one, I'm like, I. It looks more like Persona, but I don't fucking know. <laughs> I no, have no idea. It's it's, it's like the, it's straight up Persona. It's the Persona people. It's just it is just fantasy. Persona. It's fantasy Persona, right? That's what I would have said, but I still wasn't like uh, that was my guess. I, I remember hearing that maybe, but I didn't I gotta, know for I'm sure. Gonna, I got to text Jay to tell him it'll be okay with no other context. That's a good idea. I, I mean, he, he'll I appreciate that. Or anything. <laughs> uh, that that Rise of Ronin game, like uh, I'm also pretty into the way this game looks. Um, I don't know though. It's like is I, it, I, this is the one. Yeah, this was the one that I was a little surprised. This was the one where you, all of you were excited about Giant Bomb, and I was like, "Why?" I didn't quite get it. I don't. I just think uh, it looks. It's got a good look. It's got a strong uh, vibe to it. So I, I. I don't know. I'm not getting the vibe. I'm not. This is You're where not, we fight. I think. It's oh, okay. Be over cool. The Rise of the Ronin trailer. Yeah, that's that's fair. Um, I, I mean, okay. Listen, maybe it's just that uh, I. Uh, was comparing this to that Stellar Blade game that uh, that just got delayed, and that Stellar Blade game is like the most moisturizer game ever, and it's like <laughs> and it's like so generic looking to me, and I'm like, this looks better than that. I think that's what happened. I'm to going to become Team Moisturizer, I think. Okay, uh, Moisturizer on looks. I'm sure it's going to be a lot of fun. It's it's. I mean, this is basically Neo Three almost, right? Yeah, I think, yes, I basically. So I don't know. We'll, sure. And I, I don't. Know, I just like the style. Uh, okay. Wait, like, Anything style, else? Like, what do you mean? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, it's just like realistic samurai. Right? I like samurai. Yeah. Uh, I think that's what it is. <laughs> that's all it is. He's got the, mean, he's got, the, guess, he, he's got the big pant legs. Okay. Yeah. Like so samurai do in the samurai like, showdown. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Like Jinko's, like but samurai in the past. Showdown? I like the way it looks because the samurai. <laughs> <laughs> hey, have you, uh, have you watched that rebel moon? No, but I saw I that you did. Why would I? Are you insane? Uh, it's trash. Uh, but it's like the movie sucks ass. It He's sucks so bad. so bad. Back in your home. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. No, I have to. Leave. It's uh, no. it's Seven I Samurai, it but suck. It's just it's like the worst <laughs> version of Seven Samurai you've ever seen. And they made a, a version of Seven Samurai with fucking Chris Pratt. So you like, it's real bad. <laughs> Uh, yeah. <laughs> so anyway, whenever there's like something like tangentially t samurai related, I get pretty grateful. I don't know. I want to show you only the episode of Star Trek: Deep Space Nine that's called the Seven for Ringy and see what you think of that one. Oh, let's go! Uh, I'm down. A famous musician is in it. Uh, it, it, it. Iggy Pop is in it. What really? Is he a Ferengi? Yeah. No, he's a he's a. I have he's a, a weird no, choice for a Ferengi. Called. He's a different alien. It's been a while. <laughs> <laughs> but is he yeah, a Romulan? He'd make a good Romulan. No, more obscure. He's okay. from the Gamma Quadrant. <laughs> He's uh, in the Dominion. Oh, sure, yes. Uh, okay. Uh, what else you got from the list? You want to uh, pick out? Uh, he did Chronicle Hundred Heroes is the uh, spiritual successor to Sweek it in. Yep. I I am excited for this game. I have some reservations just because that sort of early action RPG spinoff they made was not good. Right, uh, I was, I was like Pass. excited about this Ayudin Chronicle uh, in terms of like I, I thought it looked really cool, and then I saw that other Ayudin came out, and no one cared. Right now, that was always like I don't know if it was exactly a Kickstarter like like stretch goal or whatever, but it was always supposed to just be some extra side thing. But it was bad. <laughs> like I I couldn't stand it to be clear. Um, so I, you know that wasn't necessarily made by these people or whatever, but it does give me a slight a bit. Of pause here. I mean, you look know, with these spiritual successor things, right? They can, can go a couple of ways. Always, sometimes you get a uh, bloodstained curse of the moon. Sometimes you get a mighty number nine. You never really know. Um, and then in terms of games that have dates, uh, Black Myth Wukong on August twentieth, and then Warhammer forty k Space Marine two on September 9th. Yeah, Space Marine One is one of those games that was like I was always going to get to. Someday. Yeah, same. <laughs> I played a little bit of it. I played like an hour of it when there was a bunch of other games I was playing and then never went back. I'm like, this is, this seems cool. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, it's, it is weird. I guess that's the other weird thing is just how little in the back half of the year, I guess that's not that weird, but even yeah. still, 
Well, it's I mean, we have pretty. we have like to be determined games, like uh, the ones. I mean, Avowed, Baby Steps. These are the ones that I'm that are just like jumping out yeah, to, to me. To be determined, or yes. Flip a coin if they get the late game. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's true for the like the later ones that we were just talking about as well. Those could awesome. easily all get delayed. Um, sure. Let's what? see. Yeah. I mean, that Destiny Two expansion, the Final Shapes coming out on June Fourth. I you, uh, you think the pressure's on with that one? Oh, a definitely. Little bit? Definitely, yes. Man. Yes, they got them. They have to hit with that one, or else things are going to be bad at Bungie. Um, Expeditions, so a Mud right Runner now. game. That's actually my most anticipated oh, game. Oh, sure. Hey, I'll play this one this time. Hell yeah, let's go. That I think this will be a good one to like play together. The last one was pretty okay, but it's um, the online was like a little bit underbaked, I thought. I think they'll probably figure it out this time, because it seems to be, hey, um, a Mud Runner game that you're supposed to play together, basically. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. Uh, what else? Dawn Trail, I suppose you're probably looking forward to that. Oh, right. That'll probably come out on the holidays, the next Final Fantasy XIV expansion. Sure, oh, yeah. Sure, Final Fantasy XIV be... launches on Xbox next year. So oh, right. A... Yeah, that'd be cool. Oh, fuck yeah. Another resurgence of players. Yeah. Hopefully. Hades 2, of course. God. That'll be early access, but give it to me. Yeah. So, it, Outlaws, is, Star Wars Outlaws is supposed to come out at some point next year. Uh, yes. I'm still pretty hopeful for that game. I thought that of it we got at ubisoft summer game Fest thing looked great there's a lot there that i am really excited about uh i'm hoping that hits yep me too i uh i like a big budget star wars game uh really just like a big budget space game as well uh so i'm, I'm hoping that'll hit i think it looks pretty good and it seems i mean it's from massive and massive did a, a, a really solid avatar game and now yeah. there looks like they're putting even more effort into outlaws I'm like, that's a studio with a pedigree of like, none of their games have been ever like bad. No, the, the Division games I like a lot. Actually, yeah, so. right. So I'm like, man, that's, I, I'm getting really hopeful for Outlaws. I mean, obviously after the, the you know, the trailers and the, the gameplay previews that they showed, those looked really good. So of course I'm getting my hopes up, but I'm just like thinking about it more. I'm like, this could be a, like one of the best games yeah. of the year, maybe even. So yeah, but you, I'm you hoping. said before. Like, you're not risking anything when you get your hopes up, right? Right, so, yeah, not really, right? Free. Yeah, you get disappointed. Well, that, does that really hurt you all that yeah. much? No, come you on, be an adult make about new it. hopes. It's exactly, <laughs> exactly, especially with Star Wars. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Yeah, uh, yeah, so, I don't know. Uh, between Expeditions and uh, Prince of Persia and Star Wars Outlaws, there's definitely stuff I'm looking forward to. And then we were going to kind of, you know, veer into this as well. But, yeah, there's a lot of stuff we don't know about, uh, any guesses about like, hey, but what's going to come out of Microsoft? I mean, obviously, Avowed could launch. Hellblade Two seems like it's uh, probably going to launch next year. Any surprises from Xbox, PlayStation, Nintendo? I mean, there's well, there's got to be some kind of surprise from PlayStation. There's I think there be will be. Yes, a 2024 game aside from like Last of Us Part One remake. And if I'm just like thinking of it critically, and if it can't be something from Naughty Dog, it's not going to be something from gorilla i mean i don't know there's a million horizon things i forgot about let's not count those and if it's not gonna be from insomnia because we've seen their slate i mean it's it seems like it's sucker punch is probably gonna be there with ghost of shizuma too maybe we're gonna get that revealed in like a early part of the year and then it comes out in holiday that just seems to make the most sense unless it's something really kind of out of left field uh which which i can't predict that would be where I put my money on. I mean, blue points up to something, right? I yeah, new IP. It is. Yeah. So who knows? Yeah, it's uh, it's it's tough to say, but um, I think early part of the year we probably get updates from all three of the companies one way or the other. Uh, and I think we like this is my personal guess uh, that we from Nintendo we hear about Metroid Prime Four in like you know, that first direct of next year. I hope we do anyhow. Um, and then from Microsoft, they lay out the dates for these games that are, are like hovering around. Maybe they have another Hi-Fi Rush kind of shadow drop. That would be cool. Probably don't have one of those every year, though. Uh, and then, yeah, Sony, I think they set up probably two to three games that are, are relatively big. Maybe the marquee game being Ghost of Tsushima 2. That would be that would be really cool. If they have that, I think they're going to be set for the year again. So, yeah. yeah. All right, Mike, uh, should we get on with it? Is that, uh, is that good? Any other final thoughts, I guess, about games that are coming out? No, just, you know, I know I was being kind of pessimistic about this year, but when I do look at the schedule, yeah, there's a lot of games I still care about. Oh, here. yeah. And hey, look, like when I talked to, when I was talking about 2023 20, um, before, you know, uh, such Tears of the Kingdom, the games I thought I was really excited about were like those three that were coming out on that same month. Like Final Fantasy 16, Diablo 4, Street Fighter 6. Yeah, Street Fighter 6 was great. Those other games were, were very good or good. But, you know, there always are weird surprises. Like, I never would have thought 
I liked Boulder's Gate 3 all that much last year. I didn't think Alan Way 2 was going to be some big deal for everybody. So it is going to be interesting to see, like, what if we have any of those again this year, right? Mm-hmm. Like, like, maybe, like, imagine if Alone in the Dark came out and everybody actually loses their mind over it, something like that. All right, we're going to take a quick break. When we get back, we're going to discuss the best games of 2011 uh, and also answer your super chats. We'll do all that right after this. Uh, what was the name of that? Uh, of that yeah, I'm trying. Game? I'm trying to remember. Uh, oh, Pragmata, cool. right? No, 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 no. no, no. The, Pr- Princess of the Trail, Path of the Goddess, oh. Path of the Goddess, Path of the Goddess. Yes. Uh, and there's some other. There's a preamble to that as well, but I can't remember what it is. That's coming uh, to Game Pass Day One. I remember That's cool. trying to ask Phil about Kunitsugami. that. Kunitsugami. Kunitsugami, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that one looks. I, I don't. I think that one looks really cool. Um, uh, yes, it looks awesome. It kind of looks Animusha inspired, right? Uh, a little yes, bit. Yes, it looks very Animusha. Yeah. Hey, thanks for all the super chats, everybody. We're going to get to those first thing uh, after this break. So look out for that. Uh, thank you, everybody, oh, for tuning in. We got we had well, we had more than four hundred people watching before we went to the break. Uh, but thank you everybody, for <laughs> tuning in. <laughs> uh, They're just like, I ain't got time for this shit. Yeah, exactly. Hit the like button, blame you. please. Uh, what was that, Christian? No, hit the like button. Oh yeah, hit the like button. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it. Whenever you say hit the like button, I I think YouTube is using like um like AR or something. The the thumbs up lights up. It's like it's weird. Huh? Is it just like, people pressing the like button when you sit down? No, no, to? no, 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 no. You should like when I when I you're get... watching a video now. Just check whenever the guy says hit that like button. The like button was like will like shine. I, I mean, I I wouldn't be surprised. I I'm still of the opinion that uh, like Blizzard listens to voice chat. They are they have bots that listen to voice chat, and they like try to put people together that have like interest based on what they're talking about. And I think they did that with Overwatch <laughs> a lot. So like I always get like paired with other people that like <laughs> knew my references. I, I would like I would had been watching a lot of uh, Drag Race or whatever, and so I'd be like make a reference to that. And every time I was playing, no matter what, someone would be like, "Yeah, I was watching that too." Now maybe it's just a very popular show. Yeah, very, very rarely seen, I, rarely talked yeah, about. Yeah, I mean show I get there. it. No, listen, but I still believe it. My tinfoil hat is always oh, weird. How the day after a Super Bowl, everyone was talking about football. It wasn't like a, it wasn't like the happened. day after. It was like several seasons. Uh, it, listen, I know what I know, and I know what I saw. Uh-huh. All right. Uh-huh. Okay. Okay. It just wouldn't surprise me. I think the way that Blizzard does stuff. Also, also, I think the reason I thought it's like I would get in a bunch of matches with other people named Grub, um, and like this is is like some sort that's of just algorithm good matchmaking. Yeah, right. I think that's just them. Well, I think it all is if they're like trying to make it a pleasant experience to get people to work together. I so. Again, uh, it's real. Yeah, I watched Rebel Moon. That movie is so incredible, so bad. How do you? It is baffling. Uh, it. Do you I, saw the, the the space the sp- when they, they 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 open up the space? Oh, of course. Well, listen. Like... Of course, he's gonna do sp- <laughs> space vagina. Um, like space whatever. Vagina? The very yeah. first shot is space, um, unfurling like a flower, <laughs> <laughs> and then and then a penis shaped ship flying through that uh opening of space so to speak uh whatever <laughs> whatever about uh-huh. that like th- every single scene is like hey what if another like threat of sexual assault happened it's like come on can we chill oh, out oh, yes. and even that's like not the worst thing about the movie although that is like exhausting uh but the worst thing about the movie is i don't care about anybody it's just like, another introduction another like scene where they're like I'm going to do a sad soliloquy uh, about my feelings. I'm like, I don't <laughs> fucking know you. Why are you talking? Yeah. It's so poorly. <laughs> ma- it's like, I cannot believe how bad that movie is. The slow-mo, you saw this, what's up with this Molo? This guy well, in the slow-mo. That's and Zack crazy. Snyder, just, yeah, he can't help himself. Yeah, but it's so bad. <laughs> it's, yeah, it's really bad. And yeah, I mean, I feel bad for a lot of the actors cause clearly yeah, because clearly Zack Snyder didn't a- care. And made them yeah, look they're, bad. There's talent. They yep. have that's the worst part. Like they're very talented, like very good actors. And then it's just like, oh, the story is just bad. Yep. Script yeah. is just bad. And it's and like, it has it has that yeah, it has a thing where like, you know, where like you shouldn't do in your your movie shouldn't be right like and then this happened and then this other yes, happened. Yes, it's and this definitely that, it's, yes. It's and just that. It's an eight-year-old recounting a story they heard at school. And then this, and then this, and then this, and then this. And it's none of it is, you know, but this happened, or because that happened, this happens. 
It's just one. It's like Ride to Hell Retribution. It really is. It's like, uh, here, this scene's happening now. <laughs> now it's done. Here's the next scene. It's like, oh my God, how can you have spent this much money making this shit? I guess the, the, the worst thing about it is like back in the day, we used to get a lot of movies like this. I think about that. Um, uh, what's that video game that Mark Hamill was in? Uh, Wolf Space. Uh, well, fucking. Uh, oh, oh, oh. Um, um, Star, fuck. Star Wolf. Star, so God damn it. Uh, they made mo a movie based on that. Wing Commander. Thank you, Adam. Asleep. There we go. There, yes. yes, they made a Wing it's, Commander movie. It's a movie. game I always go past in my origin library. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yes. <laughs> uh, and like Wing Commander got a movie and it's like, but it was made by just, you know, some sh schmuck. It was made by like someone like that would never was going to be able to make a another big budget movie. This Wing is Commander. like, yeah, Wing Commander. Like, nowadays we get Zack <laughs> Snyder like taking all the money to make some shitty movie when, instead of having like some... <laughs> Like up and comer get a chance to do that, and it fucking sucks. Well, that's another. This another two movies to, like, coming out on the Rebel Moon. I know. Series, so. Yep. Can't wait. <laughs> yeah. uh, okay, uh, let's get back into it with the super chats. You ready for those, Mike? It's just vented. Yes. That felt good. Sorry for that. Let's go. We're ready. Break. No worries. And we're back, uh, Mike. We got a bunch of super chats. We should get to those. Damn, man. Well, geez, we did. Thank you, everybody. Uh. All right, El Grug says, hi, uh, is Mike watching a sports team or is he being a professional podcaster like some people? Also, how about them Browns and Lions? It is funny. What's the other doing now? You know what? I'm like, I kind of want to watch them. <laughs> well, I know. Well, there was an interception touchdown for the Jets, but it looks like the Browns have scored since then. It's only halftime okay. and it's 30. This, you know, this actually counts towards my Super Bowl for uh, for, for uh, fantasy football in the yeah. league that you invited me into yeah. this season. I invited, I invited Jeff into my like family and friends fantasy football league because we needed an extra person and he's in the finals i'm in the finals and and it really it turned around for me uh mid-season when i played you and i remember like because i had lost a bunch in a row and you were like you lose all all these ones and now you know of course you have to beat me and i'm like i think this is i'm like i'm gonna go on a run i think this, this is, is it for me yes and i uh, won a bunch after that and uh, made the playoffs and now here we are uh, my poor cool. brother chris just dominated all regular season just, just he was like had so many wins. so far ahead 12 and 2 or something like that only lost yeah, twice like huge points later and then of course he loses his first playoff first game. <laughs> first round yep that was a, a bummer um nick says what's a canceled game concept you wish would come back around i think about retro studios uh chic zelda game or the diddy slash donkey kong racing uh concept huh that's interesting. Uh, I'm sure there's got to be some yeah. canceled concept. Let's just, let's, I'll just say like a canceled sequel. Like, like you know, sure, it would have been cool if they made uh, Mega Man Legends 3. Like, of course, I would have liked that. But yeah. It didn't happen. Yeah. And, um, uh, oh God, I had one in my head and I, and I lost it. But um, I, I don't know. I think really in general, I just want Factor 5 back. Um, I want Factor yeah. 5 to keep doing stuff. I wish they were still around making games. Well, uh, I wish that they're, I would, because they pitched for an uh, Ikid Aircraft game at some point. It would yeah. be maybe cool if that happened. Yeah, there you right? go. That would be really cool. Yeah, for them to just be able to, like, uh, in lack of a better term, spread their wings and try other stuff, uh, even or just keep making Star Wars things, uh, making flight arcade games. Yeah. I would have liked all of that. I think Retro also wanted to make a Metroid Tactics for the Wii at one point. Like that would have been fun. Yep. Also, Retro made literally also Retro wanted to do a Zelda Tactics game. Yep. They had a, a uh, yeah. That's uh, the, did you know gaming has a bunch of stuff on the, right. all of those and it's very cool. Imagine saying no to Retro. You let Retro do what they want. Yeah, and it's like they were like you have to get like these three people that have very different tastes all to say yes to get a game made. I'm like, well, that sounds like that should not be the case for Retro. They should get a kind of a, a maybe a little bit more rope than that. Uh, of, of course, uh, Bayleaf Moon in chat says Titanfall 3. Um, all that stuff sure. that they were going to do with Titanfall 3. Basically, B Titanfall 3 being Titanfall, but inspired by Hades. Fuck yeah, God. I, I actually, I get mad every time I think about that. Uh, not to say the curse word, but hey, a Platinum Games uh, game where you ride on a dragon would have been cool. <laughs> 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 like, been you, nice. can't, you can't do okay, this. I won't say it. I won't say it. <laughs> Uh, Ryan Allen says, against the storm, late game of the year contender against the storm. What's that? Why is look it up, Jeff? As yeah. as you know, it, it, uh, no, I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm looking it up right now. Against the storm. It sounds familiar. 35% on the steam sales. Did you get anything in the steam sales? Uh, no. Overwhelming positive research. Oh, it's a city builder. Oh, it looks, it looks good. Yeah, you know what? It kind of looks like a, um, I don't know the way Hearthstone looks like it's a you know is a spinoff of World of Warcraft. Something about this has a very World of Warcraft fantasy vibes about it. Sure, um, this came out of my birthday. Okay, 
Yeah, this game looks neat. Against the Storm. Okay, maybe I, I, I will. I will point. check this out. I just uh, well, I'll, I'll talk about it later. But I just finished my first campaign of um, Steam World Build, and I really like that. Yeah. I don't know if I'm going to play another campaign, but I might be down for like a different game in the same genre. Yeah. B. Treatment says uh, 2023 was crazy. Do you think it might be rational for devs to deliberately delay games to release in years that look more like 2024 with less competition? I think it's just too complicated to really factor that in too much. Can't time the market. Maybe you can maybe make some like last minute like slight delays if you if you think that's good. Kind of like what Alan Wake did. It, it just it's delayed ever so slightly at the end there. But I don't know if you can really think about years and months or things like that just in terms of crowded schedules yeah and if you um i mean and alan wake had the benefit of not having a physical version right so that gives them a little bit more more leeway are they doing good what's is it, <laughs> i can see your face there's so, or something happening with the oh. browns no i'm just reading super chat oh. what are you talking about <laughs> what are you, what, you think you could read my mind I'm like, what are you talking about you just about? had like this like apprehensive like you said happening look on your face um, no, all right. I'm just reading. All right, read, read the next one. That's <laughs> what it looks like. Wow, yeah, weird. Yeah, okay. Hey. Uh, I forgot what I was talking about, so you can read the next super chat. Hitch says, "Hey Jeff, does the leaked Insomniac builds that PC gamers have made playable affect how Sony feels about uh, releasing PC ports? We're likely seeing Horizon in February on PC. What about Last of Us Two and PC after? Nah, no. I, they're, they're, they're kind of unrelated. Um, I don't like." If you're implying that it makes it feel more positive about it because, like, people are playing it on PC and, and, and that it, the crowd is excited about it, probably not. And if you're implying that it makes them more apprehensive because the PC crowd's already playing it. No, they're still thinking about the money. That's, that's the thing that matters most to them. And putting these games out on PC a year later, two, two to three years later, that's still going to get them that little bit of extra money. It makes it just a little bit more worth it. So, no, no, I don't think it affects anything. Bayleaf Moon says, I'm excited for a quarter 2024. The backlog is so big, I'd be happy to just work through that. Also gives focus to play uh, all the great indies. Um, yeah, you know, it, it, it is kind of hard. I'm not exactly sure what indies are coming out next year. Hey, okay, hey, Jeff, let me ask you this right now. Uh, is Silk Song coming out next year? Spoon Heaven, is that next year? Uh, 2024 will be the year of Spoon Heaven, everybody. I have, <laughs> I have no idea, but why? Um, let's get everyone's hopes up. Why not? I don't give a shit. I mean... We, we should is Hades 2 going to be only in early access in yeah, 2024 probably. you think we'll even get the you think we'll even get the full release next I, year I expect that after the very successful development cycle of last time where the, that was in early access for at least a year I think it was longer but at least a year they'll do at least a year of early access and that gives them a chance to get all the feedback again and then get a maybe switch to at that point uh, a launch ready and do it exactly like they did last time. And then Nintendo will be right there ready to promote the game in a big way uh, because they had a really good relationship with Hades one because it sold so well on the switch. So I, I think that they're primed and ready to do it pretty similar to what happened last time. Nintendo Derek says uh, hype to start 2024 right away with a new Ace Attorney collection. I haven't played any of those games since their release, so I'm excited to revisit them. So that's like the opposite of me where I played those ones on the release. So I'm kind of good there. What What I... I do hope that next we get the Miles Edgeworth games because uh, one of those we never got localized. So they could localize that one and it would be a new game. Um, they're probably going to announce a new Ace Attorney at some point here, I imagine, also. Yeah, I think so. I mean, I know it's not, not the same publisher, but uh, Professor Layton's back. So I would assume uh, it, right. like, if that can come back, Ace Attorney should definitely be back should. and bigger than ever. You know what? They should also just port Professor Layton versus uh, Ace Attorney on there. Yeah, Why not? they should. I never played Mr. that. I would, I would like that. I bought it and never played it. I don't know why. Just got distracted. They should put uh, Detective uh, Pikachu in there as well, just to mix things up. Uh, must they? That game came out this year, huh? I guess it did. What's the, like between that and uh, Bayonetta Origins? Which one would you play first? Oh, Bayonetta Origins. Same, I think. Yeah. Yeah. God, weird. Yeah, man. That's that's just two like Nintendo made Switch games that you kind of forget about. Them. Yep, definitely. Mr. Pad Rago 8 says, uh, hi, up the irons, Minotti and Jeff Metal Health Grub. I was shocked <laughs> no one mentioned Burnout Paradise on the 2008 list and felt it my duty to mention this game before the franchise got shelved forever. Yeah. yeah. I like I like Burnout Paradise. Par, par, Burnout Paradise. Uh, I like that game a whole lot. I think I'm at a point where I can admit to myself, I think I like Burnout 3 uh, better. Yeah. Um, yeah. Same. But. but I do love Paradise, and it's one that uh, whenever I go back to play, 
I end up playing for way longer than I expected. I'm like, oh, I'll, I'll dive in. I'll play this for 15 minutes. And then I always end up playing for like three hours. It's just, it's just fun to drive through those billboards and things like that. Par Paradise is a good game. That was also Pad's first Super Chat. So thank you so much. Appreciate it. Uh, Eto Kula says, what game from your guys' backlogs are you most ashamed you haven't played yet? Um, you know what? You know what game I've never played, Jeff? What's that? Uh, uh, the Dark Souls. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, I've, I've just I, never I started it Dark like three Souls. or four times and I uh, couldn't get into it. Um, like from the very beginning, it's just like. I mean, I get that it's already confusing, but it's not already fun. So what <laughs> what do I do I here? I was just like, well, I didn't beat Dark S or Demon Souls. So I should beat that first. Right. And I just never did. I played a so lot of Demon so Souls uh, for the remake on PS5. And that one, I also kind of like, ah, I'll just I'm OK. I'm good. I don't know. I, I maybe that's one of the ones I could like stream so I can get the recommendations from the chat to like, oh, here's how you like get into it quicker. I always appreciate that. But I don't know. Right, right now, the, the like, no, go ahead. Go, no, you go ahead. Sorry. I was gonna say the game that's like eating at me the most right now is still Star Wars Jedi Survivor. I've like played it in fits and starts here and there uh, since things started wrapping up for game of the year. But then like Christmas got super busy and um, honestly, it's still kind of busy around here. So I haven't had much time to play it. And I, it's kind of getting to me. I have pulled up IGN's top 100 games of all time. I'm going to work backwards till I find a game I haven't played. Okay. You can tell me too when it's one you haven't played. Okay. Number one was Breath of the Wild. Two, Super Mario World. Three is Portal 2. Four, Link to the Past. Five, Super Metroid. Six, Mass Effect 2. Seven, Super Mario 64. Eight! <laughs> it's... <laughs> oh, it's too good. <laughs> Eight is Red Dead Redemption 2. I have played that. I just haven't beaten it. <laughs> uh, nine is Half-Life 2. Okay, here we go. My number 10. I've, and actually, this I've, is I've a good one. I've played a lot of Half-Life 2. I haven't beaten that either. Yeah, you said something mean about Half Life Two earlier this year, and I have not forgotten. <laughs> oh, I was gonna, like, we talked about Hell Divers. Remember that time I got you crushing Hell Divers, and you said you were gonna get me back? Is that sort of Damocles still hanging above my head? Oh yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay I just wanted to make sure. Percent. Wanted to make sure. All right. So number ten. Here it is. Uh, Disco Elysium. That is a game I should play. I played I a lot played of that. Game. I should just go back and, and especially now that it's got the voice acting, I, I should go back and, and I wonder yeah. if I could take my save over to that or not. So I lose this game. Let's see how far we get to it's one you haven't played. Because 11, Super Mario Bros. 3. I know you played that. 12, Grand Theft Auto 5. 13, Hades. 14, Symphony of Night. 12, Halo 2. 16, Witcher 3. I know you, you didn't play a ton of that. Not a, I haven't played, played a ton it. of that. I mean, I've, I've, st I've done a few missions in it. Yeah, 17, Last of Us. 18, Bioshock. 19, I, I've Bloodborne. never really played The Last of Us. Not really. Oh, really? Yeah, really. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, how about God, I don't think I've actually ever even started The Last of Us now that I think about it. So, yeah. I played, the la I played about eight hours of Last of Us Part 2, though. How about the Undertale at 20? Do you, you ever try Undertale? I, I beat Undertale, yeah. Okay, I like Undertale. I like Undertale. Uh, it's a good game. There you go. I, I, I don't love see. it like some people do, but also I don't have the the um, point of reference that so many people have of like what they carry in from other RPGs into it and stuff like that. Yeah, I think it also helps a lot if you like do like get that bad ending also where you have to fight Sans. I think that's right. kind of a big moment for it. So yeah, okay. Answer anyways for me is Dark Souls and Disco Elysium at the moment. I feel pretty bad about, I think. Man, I uh, should, I should next... go back and play more Dis Disco Elysium. That'd be cool. Mikey O'Leary says, welcome back, boyos. I think one reason 2024 feels soft because we annually and collectively forget stuff like Nintendo doing six-month announcements for a while now. So back halves always seem empty. Yeah, I mean, and it is exciting. We don't know what Nintendo's up to in a year where they like very well could release a new console. I mean, it, let's uh, and if someone wants to keep track of this and like bring it up later in the year, let's just do like a few predictions throughout this episode. Uh, I think Metroid Prime Four comes out next year. Do you? I'm not. At, I am more confident in a 3D Mario coming out than Metroid Prime Four. Okay. Okay. There we go. There's our. Honest. There's our. There's our prediction. So. And I, 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 I'm more confident about Ghost of Tsushima Two than Metroid Prime Four. So All right. <laughs> Uh, Tyler James Bay says FedEx driver here. Just wanted to say thank you for keeping me company and entertain all year at work. Happy New Year and go pack go. Thank you so much. Tyler. Uh, thanks Come your hard work, chat, man. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ali Miracle says roll pack roll pack D's. Seriously, <laughs> WTF. <Harada. laughs> it's Harada. Epic Open World said game mess folks played uh, maybe played the closed alpha Suicide Squad may or may not have had a good time. May not be as bad as the Internet wants it to be. Okay. 
I, yeah, some people have been playing it. I bet it's going to be very fun. I do think the um, leaked audio of like the story, mo- like where like they actually do kill Batman or whatever, kill all the superheroes. Mm-hmm. That stuff. I know. Right? Can they actually do kill the Justice it, League? God. It's and the worst fucking part cheesy is, as hell. The worst part is in, in superhero media, especially when people die, they stay dead. Yeah, that's the thing. You could really count like on that emotional impact. Well, I mean, it's um, it, it's weird because it's like in when when you kill these characters off in like a comic book, um, it's got usually has like years of building up storyline, uh, and and it, can, and it affects other characters. Here it's just going to be like the Suicide Squad fuckos. Just I don't know what, it, what I mean. I don't think are they going to have any like pathos to relate <laughs> to? Gonna, are they going to bash his head in with a golf club? Yeah, because <laughs> well, then I'd like it. Actually. That'd be pretty good. Actually, <laughs> every scene uh, is just a shot for shot remake of that, but with <laughs> superheroes. That'd be great. Um, Nick says hello, Mike. It's okay if I eat the cake toes. They are mine. Minotti and Jeff <laughs> Tingle's balloon fight is mainline grub. What is your desert uh, game? I desert mean, if I'm, most, if I'm most count, I'll just take over Final Fantasy 14 and be pretty good. Yeah. Um, What'd you say? I said des- desert bus for hope. I was being uh, stupid. No, you're, you're real funny. Yeah. It's just word association. You <laughs> well, you said desert game and not, not like <laughs> that, de- like desert deserted island game. So yeah. that one's rolling western. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Red Dead Redemption Two, probably. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's fair. No. You'll never I, shut up about it. God, I, I wonder uh, if it's like it should be like a speed run game or not. Um, where I could just like try to perfect that over time. Punch Out would be pretty good, but I actually probably would get tired of that so i don't know i if i could play an online game like mike it, it might be eco that'd be fun i could run yeah. some eco games connell wood says where's my dang pikmin 4 dlc nintendo did pikmin 3 like have single player dlc is that a thing i don't remember there was pikmin 3 mm-hmm. deluxe though so sure what'd they do with that i what think did, I, I what think was new in deluxe what was deluxe about uh, pikmin 3? here's what i remember is that the, they fine-tuned the controls and it's like that's not a lot but that was a huge thing for me so that it was very it played really well on the switch uh and that went a long way towards making it a better game but there's definitely some other stuff in there i just can't remember what it was uh hitch says we needed indie ssx with playstation 2 style graphics i mean we just need so many arcade style games I, uh, indie yeah there, there can't be there obviously have been good indie ones I, you know i kind of want i kind of want them to be triple a a little bit sometimes too we used to have it that way and it was kind of neat uh that like some of the most you know biggest games in the world were just arcadey snowboarding games and things like that. Yeah. But no, indies are going to do a good job stepping up and delivering on that front, and that is good too. Yep, and I uh, I hope that they live up to my expectations because these things always kind of just usually not always usually they miss, and I'm always like ah, it doesn't feel like I wanted it to. Um, but I'm I want them to keep trying. Like I'm still eternally hopeful about these kinds of things. So we'll see. That is it for Super Chats for now, folks. If you want to send in more Super Chats, we will read them before the end of the show. Thank you so much. All right. uh, Another quick break while we get set up for Game uh, Game of the Year 2011. We'll be right back after this. This is a break. Oh, there is Mikey O'Leary posted what the the deluxe version of Pikmin 3 uh, had on chat. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, let me give you the let me get you the thread. Oh, I'm in the wrong Discord. Oh, oh, oh. I was like, what is the thread? I'm an idiot. I well, apologize for being an idiot. I w- do not forgive you. Oh, so there. There you why go. Are you, why are you being like this? Don't offer an apology unless you're prepared for it to be rejected. Oh, okay, shit. Profound. Yeah. Yet useless. All right. All right. We are good. Are you guys good? Yeah. I was born good. No. Born good. Just go. We're back. And Mike, I want to do the best five games of 2011. Uh, and oh, I, right I should then. probably start by looking up what games came out in 2011. Let me do that real quick while you tell people what we do here. Yeah. Well, we've been going, working through years. I think we start with 1995, actually, and then we're working our way forward. Each year, looking at games that came out in the U.S. in that calendar year. Uh, we should, we should collect all those and put them out in a book. 
and call it like video game of the year or something. Oh, yeah, that'd be a great idea. <laughs> be, nobody would have thought of that. <laughs> oh, that'd be actually really funny. Um, but yeah, this has been actually a lot of fun. Good way to kind of go back through uh, things. It's been interesting. We are now in the period of time where Jeff and I started our games journalist careers as a uh, young, wistful interns listful or wistful are those different words? uh wistful definitely wistful not li like listful would be the opposite of listless i don't know if there is a listful mm, okay wistful then starry-eyed i'll just say starry-eyed definitely starry-eyed um, yes Def so starry-eyed is kind of out of uh, um control fucking pooping our pants with starry eyes absolutely yeah just starry poop everywhere <laughs> uh <laughs> Jeff, do you want to say a game first or should i uh yeah i mean listen i could say a game and that game would be the elder scrolls 5 skyrim yeah, I was probably going to say that game too. <laughs> that's that's a game I I still really love Skyrim. Um, I went into this having really gotten into a, to a, a Oblivion, and I was looking forward to this. And I think I started up and go and I at first I was like, I'm not sure I love that it's all like this winter space and not like oh I can go down to the capital city like you could in uh, Oblivion. Uh, quickly though that uh, that those concerns went away. And I was just like, there's just so much I can do in this game. And the, the main thing is, what I want to do is fuck around. I want to go in the game, walk in a direction, see what I run into. And it's usually going to be a fun story. Uh, and a lot of times you'll find a cave and you'll go in there and, and you'll go, go through the loop. And then the exit's going to be on the other side. So you don't have to go back through the cave. And that's always so convenient. And then eventually you'll find the person who'll be like, hey, can you go to that cave and get that thing? And you're like, oh, I already did that because I'm just an asshole who plays this, who plays this game backwards. Uh, and then, honestly, just installing mods and messing around with the co the console commands and making you know a 500 foot tall uh, version of myself that can like stomp on the the giants and things like that, and then run it super speed so it crashes your computer. Um, I, I don't know. I just love everything about messing around in this game, and, and to this day, it's one I'm like, maybe I could play some more Skyrim. Maybe I should do that. I that st seriously still happens sometimes. Yeah, it just feels like the ideal in a lot of ways of that kind of game Bethesda was trying to make. And I know, like, maybe you have to sacrifice some of the more hard, hard, hardcore RPG elements, right? That you may have had in a Morrowind. But th there was something here that was just so accessible and so kind of breezy to play. It was almost like a comfortable sort of game, right? You, just, you really did just kind of wander around and get into little adventures. Mm -hmm. And it just was incredibly good at that. Yes, it Skyrim is. Skyrim for sure. Yep, definitely. Portal 2 was a ton of fun. Uh, this was, I was really excited for this because Portal 1 was this big surprise. It was like the small piece of the orange box. Uh, it was the little, a little tiny game, but had this really cool concept and this really clever writing. And then they really did just devote all these, devote all these resources to it to make it a full blown giant game that still kept up that momentum of the original in real clever ways it kind of had that three act structure uh you know you had that moment in the sort of dungeon where you're doing the cave johnson stuff with the different goo things just really delightful game really fun puzzles uh i i think some people now are like oh this kind of humor is, is aged a, a little bit or it feels a little like cliche well this is like kind of what was starting the cliches in a lot of way a lot of games tried to be portal in portal 2 because it was so good. It also has a fantastic whole co-op mode, by the way. Mm -hmm. So just this was sort of like it also makes me sad in a way because this was the end of that era of Valve from like Half-Life One to in some ways Portal Two. Because after this is when they basically just stopped making games and were supporting Dota Two and, and you know, making Steam machines, making or yeah, making auto chess games and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I, yeah, hey, I, I like Portal 2 a lot. Uh, it's one I actually played, uh, much later. Um, at the time I was like all in on Skyrim and I'm like, oh, I'll get around to Portal 2 eventually. And for some reason, I'm just like, oh no, Portal 1 is like this like perfect little gem. I, I don't need more Portal. And then years later, I'm like, God, everyone still talks about this game in a way that makes it sound much better than I gave it credit for at the time. And it turns out they were right. Portal 2 is very, it's still very solid. And again, I played it just a couple of years ago for the first time ever. So that, that that kind of like eureka moment they give you right at the very end is fantastic. <laughs> it's a great build up. And then they make, they do it a way you can't miss it, but it makes you feel like you figured out some kind of puzzle. And then when you actually execute on it, it's fantastic. I love it, Portal 2. Yep. It's just a real solid, well-designed game through and through. Um, hmm. I would probably 
put, well, let's see. Don't want to do that one. Probably not, actually. So I'm going to go with Super Mario 3D Land, which I actually am a big fan of. I like Super Mario 3D Land a lot. It's not um, it's not Super Mario 3D World, which is better. Uh, yes. But but it's actually a really good 3D platformer for the 3DS. Uh, and, and I think it's got a lot of cool... Uh, it's got a cool look. Um, it's a little bit barren if you try to go back to it now because it's like trying to be really reduced down to run well on, on the 3DS. Uh, but when you're playing like natively on the 3DS, you don't notice that so much. It's like, oh no, it's it's sparse in a way that like when something is there and it pops up out of the screen, uh, it goes a long way towards uh, uh, like making that world feel fleshed out. And then it's just got a, it's got a solid 3D platforming idea behind it of... You know, it's mostly going to be fixed camera and you're going to explore these spaces, but it's not going to be this vast open space. It's kind of all right there in front of you, uh, but we're going to make it a little bit challenging uh, and a lot of fun and a lot of cool ideas. Uh, so I like 3D Land a lot. I, it's one I think I kind of wish they would remaster and re-release as like an HD game because uh, I bet they could do a lot of cool stuff with that. Yeah, I do like it a lot. It might be my least favorite of the 3D Mario games, just, just because the aesthetic of it is so basic mario stuff right yep uh you know i understood why they did it like that but i'm always going to prefer something like odyssey or galaxy or even sunshine that has a bit more of a unique thing going on with it but yeah i mean it's 3d mario and also the gimmick of it is a little gone because now just all mario games are portable mario games yeah true but getting a 3d mario platformer was really cool at that time yep uh okay batman arkham city we yeah gave I was arkham a lot of love, Arkham City. You know, it, it is really cool. And uh, I know some people, maybe even me on certain days, prefer Arkham City's sort of more Metroidvania building based design. Asylum. But, Asylum, excuse me. Uh, but uh, man, Arkham City is a really cool open world. And they did make gliding around as Batman with that grappling hook work really well. It was always. A ton of fun. There are some really good moments in this game that Dr. Freeze boss fight still stands out to me a lot. And you still did get those moments where you were in these kind of complexes or these buildings where it felt a little bit more like that Arkham Asylum uh, style again. So even just going around getting all the, the Joker trophies, this really felt like a smart sequel in a lot of ways. Yeah, uh, it's one where I'm like, I loved Arkham Asylum so much because it was like, as I'm playing Asylum, I'm like, oh my God, this game's really all made. And then I'm like, oh my God, it's a Metroidvania. Uh, and as someone who worshipped Metroid Prime throughout this entire period, having the realization that, oh my God, we're getting giant, big budget AAA games from great developers that are taking the ideas of like, hey, a Metroidvania can be 3D. And they're seeing that through to its obvious conclusion of, and yet here we are, another game of the year. Um, so I was always a little bit resentful of City changing things up uh, on that front. But what it is, I mean, it's 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 better in a lot of different ways, and it's it's still a very good game. Um, and it's one I'm like, I, I do think about going back and playing all the time. I'm like, I should just like go in there with like the 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 um, retrospective of Asylum is one thing, City is a different thing, and I bet I would feel much different about City going back today. Um, let's see here. Now that came out on the Xbox 360 the year before. So the one I'm going to go with is Rayman Origins. I think this oh, came wow. out on the Wii in 2011, and that's where it debuted. I like I like the these um, Rayman uh, platforming games a lot. I think I like the, the the one after this a little bit more. What was that? Rayman Legends. Legends, yes. Yeah, that one's like even a little bit better. But Rayman Origins was great. This is the one um, 2D platforming game that I think really figured out. Uh, multiplayer co cooperative multiplayer locally where it's like everyone's on the same screen and it, it, it doesn't try to like the camera doesn't try to follow any one person it's just like the action's pulled out enough and you're kind of small but everyone's just sharing the screen at the same time and it kind of just works uh, out really well and it's there's no um, uh, phys phys physics interactions between the characters so you can all share the same space and it's got that floaty jump of Rayman so it's like the platforming is forgiving enough that people of different, uh, different skill levels can all play together. If you try to like go from Rayman Origins over to something like a new Super Mario Brothers Wii that had like the four player mode, it's like, okay, yeah, new Super Mario Brothers Wii's got a lot of cool stuff going on for it, but it is kind of miserable to play with other people. Rayman Origins, meanwhile, is a complete delight. And it's got several really cool sequences uh, of just like really frenetic platforming. Uh, and, and it just makes you feel really cool. Um, even when it is like, oh, the camera's so pulled out and it's kind of got a slow, deliberate pace that never hurt it. It was just an all around a really fun game. Yeah. I mean, 
look, these games kind of about Mario and Mario in some ways. These were the yeah. better 2D platformers, right? And yeah. it, it was a big surprise. And they look a lot better, too. They're gorgeous games. I really like, uh, yeah, I like them a lot. It's a good pick. Uh, all right. I, I kind of promised the Pokemon perverts this, Jeff. Uh, oh, Pokemon no. Black and White came out. In the you give them- <laughs> there it is. You give them an inch, <laughs> they're going to take a mile, Mike. Uh, I mean, this maybe the last, definitely the last great Pokemon games, at least for me, last time I was super involved with it. It felt like the one time the series was willing to kind of mature ever so slightly. It's not like, you know, it's, well, it's about race relations. So, I yeah, mean. well, it's actually a kind of a little bit about like the villain. <laughs> except he's like, hey, I don't think we should just capture Pokemon and like force it to do what we want. Now, of course, it's Pokemon. So in the story, it turns out he's wrong <laughs> in the game's morality <laughs> system. But the, at least somebody is asking these questions. This was also the last one with the sprites in it. They kind of had the animated sprites. So it's still, in a lot of ways, the best looking Pokemon game that we have. Um, I think there's a lot of the good starters, good legendaries. It just This one just felt really uh, good. You know, uh, Heart, Gold, and Soul Silver were also fantastic. Uh, those were remakes. This is neat because it's basically a lot of those mechanics, but in a new game that was a ton of fun and just more memorable than even Diamond and Pearl, which was also on the DS. Yeah, I I played a little bit of Black and White. I remember really enjoying it. Now, I don't think I got deep enough into it to be like, oh, the the story is going places. Um, But it was just well made in general. And I definitely played a lot of it. Black Black and White 2, is is that your favorite? Is that what you always say? No, no, no. Black and White 2, is it's fine. Instead of making a Pokemon Gray, they did Black and White 2. Right. It's like I should like that more because technically there's it's more new stuff. But I kind of wish I just had a Pokemon Gray, to be honest. Sure. Uh, Okay. I I probably could try to pull something else out, but I don't know if there's anything that really jumps to mind. I think I have one that you will like a lot. Oh, yeah. Hit me with it. I was like, I'm looking at the list right now. Yeah. uh, Saints Row the Third. Oh, yeah. That's fantastic. Thank you, Mike. I love Saints Row the Third. Uh, There's a sequence in Saints Row the Third where two of the characters are just driving someplace. Like, it's an open world game where you drive places. And then they just start having a conversation about the good old days and... Um, Santeria by Sublime comes on the radio and then they're like, oh, I remember this was my whole high school. And then they just start singing together while you're driving someplace. And it was such an amazing, like character building moment that like can attach me. Cause I, I, I lived that same thing in my life where it's like, yeah, that man, God, that song took over our, our, our whole world. And so to have them, uh, ex- express that in a game and make it feel very human. Uh, that's like the magic of Saints Row the Third, and, and even the fourth one, where it's like it's really nice, cool characters getting along and having relationships with one another. And then there's all this wild stuff that happens on top of it. And Saints Row the Third was definitely the best of that. So yeah, really adore Saints Row the Third. Yeah, it was funny. You know, it's when they realized that it was better to kind of lean into the sillier aspects and to lean into things that made it different from Grand Theft Auto than just being a Grand Theft yes, Auto clone. Definitely. But- yeah, and it, it uh, worked out really well. It's good stuff. Uh, so Marvel vs. Capcom 3 and Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3 came out in 2011, which, I'll be honest, actually, I don't, I don't think I like these quite as much as some people. I always thought that these games were kind of ugly, but they're very fun. Um, they have really neat rosters, especially in Ultimate, where you do have people like Phoenix Wright even showing up. You have Amaterasu from Okami. Uh, yeah, I remember you had a a, a rocket raccoon well before uh, the Guardians of the Galaxy movie right. even came out. Back when he was a deep uh, pick, right? B. <laughs> Shot chats. Marvel's Capcom Three is ugly. Might be the craziest bike tape ever. I'm a little. Oh, I'm not saying uh, I get people uh, don't agree with that. I mean, I'm surprised when people think that's a shocking thing when looking at that game. It's kind <laughs> of ugly, but that's fine. Uh, it definitely was a lot of fun, and I'm happy to consider it for the list. Yeah, I put, I put it up there. Um, sh- I can get to the uh, unless you have like one more while I get set up for I this. I think actually. it's good to look at what the community's thinking. Right, I think that's. Second. I think that's all of the big ones. Um, um, oh, here's one more. Here's one more. Okay, hit me I with just it. saw Bastion. Yeah, I was. I did see that that came out that year. I I played a little Bastion. I was never uh, never really, won me I over. I liked Bastion quite a bit. It's simple kind of top down action RPG thing. This is super giant games first real big release uh maybe the first release in general 
And it stood out, you know, the things that they're good with today, just the really good art, the kind of uh, fun characters. This is the game where you had that narrator narrating almost everything you did. Yes, I like that a lot, of course. Yeah. Yeah, this was kind of the digital game of the year for me in a lot of ways, more so than Limbo, which is also this year or, or no, Limbo was 2010. This got PlayStation 3 this year. Never mind. All right. Well, I got the podcast producers here with their input. Uh, let's we're going to uh, hit the highlights here. Joy Z says Super Brothers Sword and Sorcery EP. I remember being so excited for this because I thought the look was so cool. It's an iPad. I, 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 make, I call it an iPad game. I bet I bet it was on phones as well. Um, but yeah, I, I played it and I'm like, ah, it's a kind of a slow paced a point and click adventure that doesn't have a lot going on. So I never actually ended up enjoying playing it, but it looked cool. I I never understood what this game is. I think, <laughs> I think I even played it and I didn't quite get it. But everybody was so gaga over it. I just like the yeah, look. I, I, yeah, I just never quite understood. Like, what what do you do in this game? Uh, you go to places, you point, and then you walk to that place, and then maybe inter- interact with something. I honestly I don't remember much. I just remember it being kind of okay. boring for me. Um, Tommy Pencils oh. says Dark Souls. Is that right? Did we miss this? Let's see. Uh, well, I mean, just completely gloss over. Oh, yep, there it is. <laughs> I mean, yeah. But I, again, I, I've I played it. And I, I, I just never got into it. So, yeah. and I just admitted I somehow just never really played Dark Souls. Twenty twenty four would be the year it. I play through Dark Souls. There you go, everybody. That's yeah. another prediction that could be. Would be fun if we played it together. Or yeah, sure. Like, and currently, yeah. Uh, hey, we gave Demon Souls a lot of love. I mean, look, how boring would it be? Uh, no, I'm sorry. Uh, Maybe we should put it on the list anyway. So people All right, get slightly help, less help mad at us. Do that, yeah. But I don't know, guys. Actually, hang on. I'll, I'll do it right now so that we just don't forget. Dark Souls. You guys are going to be seeing a big empty thing there. Yeah. Yeah. So there, you know, so yeah, maybe an important game as it Why turns out. Why is that over out. my face? We fix that too. I like it there. Mm-hmm. It's an improvement for you. Oh, okay. I like cool. when OBS blocks your mug. All right, there we go. Uh, Jamie H. Christmas Eve says Yakuza 4 was my first introduction to Kazuma Kiryu uh, and the mean streets of Kamurocho. The density and variety of things to do in Kamurocho, coupled with each playable character having a unique fighting style and memorable side stories made me a, f- a fan for life. Um, man, I don't hear many people talk about like Yakuza um, like four. 4 and 5 and 6, I don't six. think. Yeah, yes. I, you're right. I guess I'm... Usually when I hear people talk about the games, it's, you know, I hear about Zero, I'll hear about... Right, you know, I, I, I like think those ones definitely, like, had, I mean, they improved clearly over time. Uh, but I know people did still really like these Yakuza games. Sure. Uh, Mommy's Times New Year's Blowout. Uh, Mommy Times New Year's Blowout, there we go. Says, I'm cheating this week. I'm sure Mortal Kombat 9 was already mentioned. Uh, World of Tanks, a big dog in the free-to-play uh, world still. And then the Binding of Isaac cemented the roguelite like uh, like slash light as a big genre all its own. Man, Binding of Isaac really came out that long ago. That's wild. Uh, Binding of Isaac Rebirth is on our Game Mess Game Club poll right now, actually, because I have somehow never played it. Yeah, I'm, I, I bet as soon as I start playing Rebirth, I'm going to get into it in a big way. So yeah, we'll is see. It, yeah, is it, uh, well, is it Best Friends that goes on about Binding of Isaac constantly? Like, they love oh, it. Oh, Besties? besties yes, yeah, Besties. Best yeah, yeah, yeah they, the they talk about it a lot. Wrestling stable mixed up. Yeah, I think... Um, Russ has got like several hundred hours in the game or something like that. Maybe even maybe even more than a thousand hours in it. Um, hey, uh, nobody did bring up Mortal Kombat. 9. Yeah, uh, I like Mortal Kombat just, nine a whole bunch. That was especially at the time, even that was really good. Uh, it wasn't the first game to have that kind of story mode. I think even Mortal Kombat versus DC had at first. But this is the I don't know. This is the first one I really think about. It was a big roster. I think the whole kind of re- redoing the stories of one, two and three with slight changes was a lot of fun because those were, you know, old arcade games where the stories back then were always so kind of nebulous or like set in splash screens. Right. I think Mortal Kombat 9 is worth uh, considering. Uh, Jackie G mentions this game that I don't think even I don't remember this one. Skyward Sword, uh, the story, the characters, the music this is without a doubt one of my favorite games of all time. I like Skyward Sword. I don't know if I could put it in a top five for 2011. It's, I think, in 2011, because I was doing uh, a podcast with AJ then, explaining Barrel, I think I did say this was my game of the year at that time. I bet it was my, I I bet like it was my game of the year at the time, too. Um, uh, going back to it, when it came out on Switch, was a little rough for me, even with some of the improvements in, in the speeding up. After, in the post-Breath of the Wild world, it, it is a slow, 
it's a, it's a monotonous start, uh, even in the monotonous beginnings in a lot of ways. But I do like Z Skyward Sword. Me too. I think the Motion Plus stuff was pretty neat. Um, I would be okay considering, but you know, you're right. We probably aren't going to quite get it on there. That's okay. Yeah. Um, I, this was definitely right. Like early, early game coverage career. Cause, uh, Nintendo sent me this with the gold controller and stuff to review the game. And I played all of it and reviewed it for, God, it must've been Bitmob, I guess. I don't know. Um, yeah. really, I really liked it though. Uh, but I don't know if I'm going to get in the top five. Always be clothing slash Corgi says Deus Ex Human Revolution. This is one I was hoping someone would bring up. I like this game a lot too, and I would like to go back to the Deus Ex games real bad. Uh, a game where uh, a throwaway plot about a broken mirror had it, had me questioning player agency versus a character's history and personality. Um, are you a big Deus Ex guy? Um, not really, but I actually played through Human Revolution, so when I did beat, and I also liked it a good bit. I did think that this game was a lot of fun. I liked its specific kind of uh, sci-fi Detroit scum take on the future. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, I, th I thought that like the different print, you know, past you could take was fun. I think I did a stealth build and that worked out pretty well for me. Yeah, you know, maybe the most memorable one of these. And I definitely understand people who wished it was a bit more of an immersive sim right. like the original game was. Right, you're reading people's emails. Much. You're not doing much with it. Usually it's like, yeah, some of that stuff was there, but yeah, it, it kind of strayed a little bit far afield. But I, I enjoyed what I played of it at the time. Uh, Mr. Bowler, a lot of good options to choose from for 2011. But for me, the best is Portal 2. Uh, Lobotron yeah. says The Witcher 2, Assassin of Kings. Uh, did you ever play Witcher 1 or 2? I played a bit of 1 at the time. It's funny because people did like Witcher 2. And then Witcher 3 came out. And it seemed to erase that yeah. game. <laughs> it really like, felt that way, yeah. Like, it did, like usually it happens. There's some people like, well, here's why I like the previous one a bit more. Here's why the previous one should still be played. And Witcher 3 is the most, like, some people will talk about Witcher 1 still because it's so different. No one talks about Witcher 2. Again, a game that at the time people seemed to like. Yeah, uh, Flopatron does mention a couple of reasons people like it. It's got a completely different act, too, based on your story decisions. Mm. Uh, something AAA wouldn't uh, be able to afford anymore today, including CDPR. Yeah, they can't make content. You can't get to, unless you're Baldur's Gate 3, in which case, hey. Uh, a Thwomp in a French maid outfit, which is uh, for my diary, I'm sure, uh, <laughs> mentions Super Mario 3D Land. Uh, of, that's a, a standout one, for sure. Man, that Nintendo Selects box art is so ugly. Yeah, God. All of their are bad. This is one of the worst, though. Uh, I really don't like this at all, especially with like the, the warning here at the bottom. Uh, oh, God. Teriyaki Blue says nothing beats the world design of Dark Souls. Also, shout out uh, to Dead Rising 2 Off the Record, a game where you play as Frank West and a retelling of De Dead Rising 2. Uh, it added new right. bosses, weapons, areas, brought back the photography, and added a no time limit sandbox mode that people were wanting. Huh. Yeah, I, I, remember, I remember this, like the Frank, the Frank West mode for Dead Rising 2. Uh, Clink says Bastion is the real game of the year for 2011, so I'm sure you two will have an intense discussion about whether Duke Nukem Forever should be second or third on the list. Okay, Clink. I love, I love Dan Reichert's story about having to play Duke Nukem Forever while freaking Randy I mean, Pitchford's like, just like over his shoulder. <laughs> like, it silenced the entire That time. would drive me crazy. I, I'd be like, you know what? Never mind. I don't give a shit about this game. We'll write about something <laughs> else for the magazine. Uh, two-time champ beef hammer says Jeff and Mike are going to punish dark souls simply because they were not get good pilled <laughs> bunch of Philistines. So here, don't forget Minecraft's official release was 2011. Okay. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> the crisis will five says we have reached my favorite year of gaming portal Two, Arkham city, dark souls, little big planet two, and my two favorite games of all time, uncharted three and Skyrim. You don't got to put Uncharted 3 on the list. Just say, wow, that's a respectable game to have as your favorite game of all time, dude. Respect to you, my man. All right. Ready, Mike? Wow, that's a respectable game to have as your favorite game <laughs> oh, of all yeah. time, dude. Respect to you, my man. There you go. It's, as much as I, I love, like, you know, Uncharted a lot, I like Uncharted 3. I've. It's weird how much more I like Uncharted 2 than 3, even though they are very similar games in a lot of ways. I don't have to play again to really explain why. I do... There, there was something about Uncharted 3's pacing that was a little weird or storytelling. Like, there's like that moment where he's like lost in the desert for a day and he's like dying of thirst. And then as soon as he gets to a gunfight, he just runs around completely normal and it, just weird things like that. Or I remember this was the game too where they're like, well, people thought that our villains have been underbaked. So this villain is going to be amazing. And that's basically what they, they were saying. Was not also. 
Yeah, and then she was just another bad villain, but it was worse because they built it up. So it was like, okay. <laughs> also, uh, wasn't this the game I, that like, gave us uh, Ludo Narrative Dissidents? Yeah. Woo! I think that was Bioshock was the game that gave us that. No, that did, oh, okay, that, that, this, it definitely happened with this game as well, but you're right. Yeah, it was Bioshock. I think it came back. I think you're oh, right. Yes. I think it came back in full force with this what, one. What's this? What's this the one where, like, the guy came out, like, the director or something said, like, actually, you're not getting the red things on the screen where you're getting shot is, like... Uh, his luck running out is this is, is, is it? yeah something like that's that whatever that's what, that's what, like, okay i guess yeah. so yeah yeah whatever. hey that's a respectable game it has one, have as one of your favorite games of all time respect to you my man uh zoomer says uh, we drink to our youth for the days uh, for the days come and gone for when the age of todd had only just begun uh and then foreshadowing also when my pick last time came out 2011 not 2010 my bad i was on a long yeah. gaming hiatus between gamecube and 3ds also upset I missed my chance to nominate the best Bioshock game last week because <laughs> of my Zelda comment. Uh, so, yes, mentions uh, uh, The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim, Ocarina of Time 3D for the 3DS, and Super Mario 3D Land. Yeah, I guess this was the year that the 3DS came out, right? That's messed up. Yeah, that's really weird. That's messed up the 3DS came out 12 years ago. I don't yeah. <laughs> God, that's weird. You know, yeah. Back in the day, we would be like, well, 3DS games are retro now. Absolutely no, not. No, no, yes. I had to stop. So... Skyrim's actually the game that made me stop doing that. Once right. Skyrim became 10 years old, I'm like, nope, no, no, fuck that. I'm not calling Skyrim a retro game. I'm not doing that. So it's not right. Just yeah. Games aren't really that different from then. There's nope. what's Finally retro about that, says. really. Yep. It's it's Nothing changed. The definition has changed. Uh, Slanta Mc, McLoss, McClossum, I should say. Says, my pick is The Witcher 2 Assassin of Kings. There it is again. Yep, a huge step up from the first Witcher game. Gameplay improved by a lot, and your choices actually matter. Uh, Let's see, Bench JC says Skyrim, a game I've never rolled credits on. Uh, Bench, I don't think I have either, but played hundreds and hundreds of hours. Maybe probably. I never did like the next most important storyline, the one with like the two kings. I was just like, ah, you both suck. Went and like. Hung out with dragons. Right. I'm not doing that. Yeah, usually when I play, I don't even like pick one of the sides. Like they're like, oh, you want to pick, you know, one of them? And it's like, ah, I'll just keep going and not actually do that. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, I like oh, now nowadays I like to play as the mod where you just start as a random character in the world. Uh, I mean, Screaming Mad, it says Madden NFL 12 took the truck stick to a whole new level as the new coll- collusion system, I think probably collision system, used momentum to give the series a more. Collusion system? <laughs> what, what is this? Gaming st- games journalism? I don't think so. Uh, it used momentum to give the series more realistic tackling, including over 100 new tackling animations. Uh, but I'll also offer Batman Arkham City. Yeah, um, definitely. Uh, Sarah Biscayne says one that I think is going to be underrepresented, uh, underrepresented, but absolutely deserves to be mentioned is Terraria. Man, Terraria came out the same year as like the official release of Minecraft. That's pretty wild. I say that's pretty weird, huh? Yeah, but I guess it also does feel like it's been around for forever. Uh, let's see. Matt Rare Monkey says Outland, a fantastic action platformer that uses color changing system like Ikaruga. That's from Housemark. I don't. I don't know no. if I've ever even seen what Outland is. Oh, uh, I know this. I reviewed this. Yeah, they, they. No one ever talked about this one. I actually like this one. It is just like a two D action game. You're a guy with a gun, and there's like color changing stuff. Yeah, yeah. I remember at the time thinking it was weird. Nobody noticed this one. Okay, okay that nice. sound. That sounds familiar. I'm, uh, yeah, I liked oh, Outland. Man. I could. I wonder if I could find my review now. Oh, smart. Yeah. Oh yeah. Give it like an eight. Okay, I'd yeah. Give it a coward score of an eight. Right. This is yeah. I, I definitely played this. Man, that was 2011. That makes me feel very old because this feels like just a couple of years ago. Um. All right. Well, it's on Steam. Uh. See. Uh. See. Matt also mentions Bastion, Saints Row the Third, Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom Three, and Skyrim. Um. Let's see. Doctor Ryan says Saints Row the Third was robbed. Saint, uh, I think that's a reference to Giant Bomb. Saints Row the Third forever. There's a whole secret room in that mansion full of dildos. Game of the year. Uh, I do love Saints Row the Third. Uh, Hospice has literally finished a survival playthrough yesterday. Utterly timeless and in my top three games ever. And that's for Skyrim. Michael Michael Riley says Portal Two. Uh, Crouching Boomer by an open fire says Ultimate versus Capcom Three. A divisive title upon its announcement mere months after the release of Vanilla Marvel Marvel Three. Despite the initial pushback, the update was welcome as it changed uh, as its changes helped the game move past the game's initial stagnation of the meta. Uh, Alex says most of my answers I would have said are already uh, already here, so I'll shout out Killzone Three. Mike, you have any love for Killzone Three? I think I liked it no. more than two. I remember. 
<laughs> I think I did. This was the one with the jetpack, right? And it was more more snow. Yeah. I liked the snow. That's right, Chris. Sure, are you like uh, you're like Killzone weirdo, aren't you? Yes, yeah. I am. I only kill some two. I mean, kill some some. <laughs> stop, just stop. The, pa the panicked way you said, yes, I am, is all you needed to say. Uh, Lenny <laughs> there was so much anxiety in the answer. <laughs> Lenny Cool Dick Denver says, I'm replaying the 3S version now, but Radiant Historia has the best time traveling gimmick in a game ever. Um, yeah, this is supposed to be like... a. Of all the games that people say are like Chrono Trigger, this one gets brought up a lot, and it's supposed to be fantastic. This is interesting. A big one on my backlog. Cranges McBasketball says Batman Arkham City. Isaac Clark says Super Mario 3D Land. Uh, Boppy New Year says, I just wanted to point out that since the Game of the Year episode with Gen 2, Micah said, don't worry, Pokemon will get its time to shine with black and white as justification when Pokemon doesn't make that list. And something tells me it will not be getting its shine today. It's still my vote, though. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. We're not there yet. Uh, Adam, question mark, says Game of the Year 2011 was one of either Skyward Sword or Ghost Trick. Oh, shit, Ghost Trick. Okay, I'm going to... Oh, Ghost Trick, absolutely. Okay. God, Ghost Trick is good. Ghost That's, Trick. That, like, you know, in a world where I can make Jeff play games, like, this is one of them. I should uh, play Ghost Trick. I bet I would like it that. It did have that... It had that Switch remiss this year that I think definitely went under the radar. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I mean, this year, yes. People are like, bad. I can't take time for that. That came out on yeah. tw in 2011. Uh, Chaos Buckaroo says Jimmy Johnson's anything with an engine. <laughs> Look at this guy. I know. <laughs> Fucking Jimmy Johnson. Uh, Villain Max says Skyrim is my answer, but I wanted to point out how disappointed I was with Call of Duty Modern Warfare 3. Yeah, it wasn't okay. as good as Modern Warfare 2, for sure. Like, this was already at this point. People were kind of like, all right. <laughs> like, obviously, we like these games are the best song every year. Um, but yeah, it was interesting, Jeff. I had a friend over yesterday. He was like, Kind of understands what I do, knows a little bit about video games, but he's like, it's really weird to me that you like, or you know, you do video games journalism or whatever, and but you don't like play or talk about Call of Duty and Madden, which are the best selling games every year, right? I was like, yeah, I, I could see how that seems weird to you, but you have to trust me, it's just, it's very normal, actually. Yep. Because there's just not much else to say about those games. Imagine if you, talk, about it, yeah. if you talk about Madden every year, I and mean, obviously there's people who, who do do that, but they only talk about Madden because, right. What else can you say? Uh, Eamon Goldie says, no, I'm not screaming Madden, but I want to honor the last good Madden. Right on point. Uh, it's Madden 12. This is the last game with all the features that current Madden players are asking for. They gutted all future Maddens for Ultimate Team. It's the last Madden to let you set hot dog prices. Is it really? That's just something I assume is in every Madden. And I like that's weird. I didn't know that. Yeah. Uh, this is the last one that lets you set hot dog prices. Jeff, I think that was uh, he intended me to say it that way. Also, it covers athlete uh, is uh, its cover athlete is an Ohio hero, uh, and that's Peyton Hillis. Which of course, yeah, I remember yeah. there was like a tournament voting thing, and he won, and it was very surprising to me that to see a brownie on the cover here. But uh, yay! Yeah, yeah, Peyton Hillis was a a star for sure. Um, yeah, man, that guy, that, you think about it, it's like, it, obviously, Ultimate Team was a big factor, but also, this is Madden 12, so was this the f the last one? No, okay, I, I guess Madden 13 would have been in 12, 2012 before the PS4, when did that come out? 2013? So 2013, 2012 was Wii U. Okay, yeah, so it's like, they probably were, like, getting ready for that next one, so like, they always would start pulling features out of the Madden games, so they could put him slowly back yes. in over the course of a generation. Uh, and then I think Ultimate Team just distracted them and they never did that again. That's a real shame. Uh, justice for hot dog prices. Sasquatching <laughs> says, fun single, pl uh, single play missions and the multiplayer was great. The controls felt weighty and hits were impactful. Can't wait for two. And this is a reference to Warhammer 40k Space Marine. We were just there talking is. about this. Yep. Uh, Adam GC says Fight Night Champion. Uh, I only played a few of the Fight Night games and not very much, but people really like Fight Night. Yeah, not really my thing. Adam Asleep says, I think I appreciate Mario Kart 7 all the more in hindsight as it feels much more like Mario Kart 8 than Double Dash, DS, and Wii. Adding underwater and flying sections and customizable parts, it was an excellent game on its own and set up a foundation that followed for another decade plus. Yep. Mario Kart 7 uh, is really, really good. I really right. like and Mario I mean, Kart Mario Kart 8 really is just like this game plus. Yep, so. more of this, basically. Nintendo owes a lot to Mario Kart 7. Yep. Uh, Bugadillo says Dead Space 2 is an incredible horror action game. 
Uh, Shoji Kodos is Portal 2. Not only was the campaign, campaign stellar, but the co-op was legitimately one of the best co-op camp games uh, I can recall playing. Uh, Daniel says, Bikini Karate Babes 2. Oh, hell yeah. I don't know this. This year has a lot of sleeper hits, so to avoid being the Skyrim slash Dark Souls guy, I'll shout out Nino Kuni and Dungeon Siege 3. Also, shout out to Jetpack Joyride, a game I played for hours on my brother's iPod Touch when I was grounded for a month. Being 17 was weird. Yeah, shout out to you, Daniel. Uh, Bikes yeah, and... um, oh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry, but Nino, Nino Kune, I'm, I'm making sure actually this game actually came out. Uh, yeah, it doesn't come out in the West until a couple of years, actually. 2011 is Japanese. So we'll talk about Nino Kune 2013, believe it or not. Wow. Uh, Bikes and Brews says, I'll throw in for Dead Space Deuce. Uh, still my favorite Dead Space. Also, also, thanks for the great year of content. Looking forward to see what's coming in 2024. Thank thanks, yeah, Bikes and Brews. Yeah, we'll talk about Dead Space 2. It was really good. Um... I like to even back then. For, I, th I think I was a minority of liking Dead Space one more, but I didn't play through all of two. Um, but I hope I hope they do a t remake of two because uh, just from what I play of Dead Space one remake, they've done a great job. Yeah. That. I'd be what, what, what is that studio? That studio is working on one of the Marvel games now, right? I can't uh, remember. I'll, go, I'll find that. I'll yeah. Out. Thank you. That was well, it's motive. It was motive. Yeah, it's motive, it's right? And I think that they're doing either Black what Panther or one of the other ones, and I can't remember which Wonder one. Wonder Woman is. or somebody. I'll yeah. Find out. Uh, Wonder Woman. Like Wonder that. Woman, I think, is that new... Uh, whatever. Yep. Dr. Ledge says, as Daniel said, this year has a lot of sleeper hits, but also a ton of great sequels. Iron Man. My mother's making the Iron Man game. Iron Sorry. Man. Okay. No, thank you. I was, I was trying to place it. Uh, for me, I want to shout out Deus Ex Human Revolution, which has some truly brilliant storytelling. Uh, having replayed it again at the start of 2023, it's just as good as ever. Uh, but also, a shout out to Final Fantasy Tactics War of the Lions. While the show slowdown in the game is unfortunate, the additions and improvements improved script make it a wonderful update. Uh, B. Traven says Skyrim is a worse version of Oblivion. Dark Souls is a better version of Demon Souls. Easy choice for uh -oh. 2011 game of the year. Uh oh. Uh, Big Tony says Catherine. Uh, man, Catherine was. Catherine's like, a fun game. Oh yeah, for I don't sure. Know if I, could think, I don't know if I think enough of it to top five it, but I like Catherine. Yeah. Regenerate. Uh, J. D. Camp says I like Wizorb. I think I've heard I I've like heard penguins. of this, but I've never played Wizard. <laughs> I like Pi. Uh, Vision Forty Nine <laughs> says Dark Souls and Portal Two are both probably top ten all timers for me. So do your civic duty and put them on the list. Wow. Uh, DMC slash or excuse me, DMC DDD's macabre consigen. I don't know what that word is. Consonage. Caricature. Uh, Kirby Return to Dreamland was Kirby's first home console game in 10 years and IMO where the games took a big step up in quality. A greater amount of, of thought was put into the level design using specific abilities to navigate challenges and solve puzzles and the multiple moves per copy ability finally cemented their place in the series. This is the game that got me into the Kirby series. Is this the one where they came up with like, oh yeah, basically the copy abilities are going to work like uh, smash attacks where you're going to press up to do something, right well, to press something else? I mean, so, um, Superstar and Super Nintendo did that first, and okay. then they went back from it. Like uh, 64 and Dreamland 3 didn't do that. This was the one that brought that back. This is the this was the engine that all the 2D Kirby games used since then. Yep, and uh, this is the one that got re-released through Switch this year, right? Yes, this one we had the remake of this year. I, yeah, so yeah, this is one of the games I beat this year, and I thought it was pretty good. My kids liked it a lot. Uh, T Money OG says Ghost Trick is my choice. I played it for the first time this year, and it was incredible. Uh, not Skywalker says Pokemon Black and White. It's your time to shine. Uh, Deus Ex Human Revolution from Hammond of Texas. Uh, Gigantes 42 says Skyrim, Arkham City, Dark Souls, and Portal 2. RT Bix says 2011 was the year I built my first gaming PC. Battlefield 3, Witcher 2, and Skyrim will always have a place in my heart. Also, I didn't play it until a couple years later, but Dark Souls is an absolute masterpiece. Ali Miracle says, did you, all, uh, com did you all do competitive Catherine? My sicko ass Catherine. did. It was, it was what also brought the rob robust-ish multiplayer mode in the remake recently. Uh, one of the few plats uh, that may have taken may have taken a few years off my life lifespan. Okay, yes, and totally. Also, way, way, way too much Marvel versus Capcom 3. Uh, Edgar Marino says, Portal 2 is my game of the year. Uh, he also mentions uh, Dragon Quest VI Realms of Revelation, but I barely remember that game now. Uh, Portal 2 still holds up. That's, that's interesting because uh, Dragon Quest VI is one that when I, when I was like in my Dragon Quest phase, I think last year or the year before, uh, like that's when people are, seemed really mellow on. This is the remake of it that came out for DS. I still want to play it at some point, but it does not get as much love as like Dragon Quest V or 
four or eight or something. Yeah, I was going. I'm like, I was conf- I'm like, because I thought eight came out before this, and okay, so this is a remake. This All is right. a remake on DS. All right, cool. Uh, yeah, but I remember at the time people being like, nine is great, and six is like, mm. um, spooky Christian. I remember this iteration of FIFA being very cool, but don't ask me why because I already forgot what's different from FIFA 11. He's talking about FIFA 12. And then Turbo Sean says, Jesus, H, tap dancing, Christ, guys, please, I'm begging you, Pokemon Black and White. There it is. There it is. All right, I'll get this uh, reformatted over here so we can see everything. Yeah. So what what do we want to add that people are talking about? I think definitely. I added uh, most of them. You add Ghost Trick? I added Ghost Trick, yes. That's important. Give me a second while I time it up. I am pleased. I like Ghost Trick a lot. Okay, this is gonna, this is gonna be interesting. Maybe this is maybe gonna be interesting. Um. Okay. So for audio listeners, here's what we have: Skyrim, Portal Two, Super Mario 3D Land, Batman: Arkham City, Rayman Origins, Pokemon Black and White, Saints Row the Third, Ultimate Ver- Marvel vs. Capcom Three, Bastion, Dark Souls, Ghost Trick. Um. Do we want to add Witcher 2? I never played it. I never played it. Uh, no, it's fine. Okay. Like um, I said, it seems like... Uh, I think it's neat that there were two people who brought it up, but I that's like the first time I heard people brought it up since Witcher 3 came out. I think. Yep. Uh, anything else you want to add uh, that we've left out? No, nothing that I think me or you are going to like really give a, a strong chance here in terms of top five. I think we're good. Yep, I think I think we're pretty good. I am interested in what you think should go up for sure. I mean, I clear, clearly Skyrim's going to make the top five. Skyrim I, is a for sure. Yeah. I, I, I think Batman's probably going to go up. Portal 2's Batman probably going to go up. Batman probably goes up. What, which one did you say lastly? Oh, sorry. Portal 2. Portal, yeah. Those three seem pretty likely to me. I, I really would like to get Sancho the third up there. Oh, now here's what you're doing to me. Here's my here's my issue now. Is <laughs> okay, I understand there. if we have to like, it's the end of the year. We got to be nice to these listeners every once in a while. Here's the thing. Oh yeah, no, is that I've been because I I really do want Pokemon Black and White up there, <laughs> but holy shit, do I like Ghost Trick? <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. What if? What? What if? What if? What if we? Got Arkham City out of there for Ghost Trick. Yeah, I'm okay with that. I like Arkham City. <laughs> Arkham City's like number six. Yeah, that's number six, everybody. Yeah, Take. there you go. Okay, all right. Uh, okay, so let's just <laughs> let's just start I moving these. About it. <laughs> <laughs> but look, I'm a man by words. All these people didn't think I was even gonna do it. No, <laughs> Pokemon Black and White is happening. Lost ghost trick there for a second. All right, so then. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, I'm just gonna move these ones up. <laughs> it's a Christmas miracle, everybody. <laughs> uh, ghost trick, and then. Hey, hey, hey! It's my birthday month. Put, put ghost trick at two. Yeah, yeah. No, listen, this is just temporary. <laughs> okay, yes. You want ghost trick up there? I'm fine with I that. Want ghost trick at number fucking two. I, Let's go. As long as I can get Saints Row the Third at three, then. Hey, three at third. I like it. Okay. All right. Cool. All right, so let's uh, do this. <laughs> uh, do you want to yeah, put Pokemon uh, Black and White above Portal 2 or not? Uh, no. <laughs> no <I don't. laughs> hey, it looks really good at number five. In my opinion, really good showing for Pokemon Black and White. <laughs> I don't know why I think this is very <laughs> You made the list, everybody. <laughs> we did it. We did it. I told you. Okay. Uh, so that means we're, cut, we're cutting the last super- Pokemon game making one of these lists. Oh, yeah. You guys got to shut up about Pokemon now. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> and I, will, I will make fun of you if you suggest Pokemon uh, X and Y, but you're allowed to. <laughs> uh, we're, we're cutting Super Mario 3D Land, Arkham City, Rayman Origins, uh, Ultimate Ver- Mar- Marvel vs. Capcom 3, uh, Bastion, and Dark Souls. Sorry, me and Mike haven't played Dark Souls. Um, Elder Scrolls V, Skyrim at number one. That does... That's probably right, right? Yeah, it's Skyrim. It's a little boring, but it's right. Yep. Uh, then Ghost Trick, Saints Row the Third, Portal 2, and Pokemon Black and White rounded it out at number five. 
Jack, I think last uh, last time we did this, we actually did not have anybody yell at us. Everybody seemed mostly happy. I suspect this time. I think we <laughs> might get yelled at, Mike. <laughs> I think we might get yelled Let's at. Let's find out time. right now as I post it to Twitter. <laughs> yeah, I think it's like we're going to see. I'm uh, very excited still, though. Mm. Uh, I'm the proud of us, It's a fun though. show we do here. Yeah. <laughs> All right, there we go. Game of the year 2011. Thanks for hanging out with us for that, everybody. Uh, you know what? Let's do one last quick break, and then when we get back, uh, we'll talk about what, we, what we've been playing. Look at that. Arnott okay. Skywalker said, because I put black and white on the list, he'll be, they'll be promptly purchasing Ghost Trick Remastered. <laughs> okay, yeah, all right. Deals with the devil, all right. Yeah, yeah, just like just said, I can Steam, by the way. spell this list. I don't know what that is. <laughs> <laughs> What'd you say, Christian? Uh, Ghost Trick is on Steam, by the way. Oh yeah, I'm it's everywhere it. now, baby. Yeah, yeah, you got no everywhere. excuse. It's not long either. I think the entire uh, thing might be like ten hours. It's a dumb game for dumb child. So wow, Come I on hot. I don't know what's, what's on. you just hate it because anytime you've watched a Capcom Pro Tour stream, you've had to watch <laughs> ads for that constantly this year. <laughs> <laughs> Mike's like that flew under the radar. Trust me, if you watch Street Fire this year, you know about Ghost Trick Remastered. Oh yeah. <sighs> we did, Bob. We we fucking did it. Congratulations. Finally. I'm happy for Thank you guys. Did we? Did we really? Well, uh, after, coast? after over a decade of game of the year lists, we finally <laughs> got a good one up there. Jeff, do you know do you know that if you double click on the name of the thread up on the like on top of like the name, it will open full screen? Uh, I di I've definitely done that before, but I forgot, Christian. Oh, so thanks for the fuck? reminder. I didn't know that. Yeah. Thank you. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, because he keeps like zooming in and doing a bunch I keep of zooming in. Right? Yeah. I mean, Wait, it, how do you get to undo that? Oh, open split view. Okay, it's in the it's yeah. in three buttons. It, oh. it, it, it looks fine on stream, right? Because it's high high enough it resolution. Looks fine. It's okay. fine. She's like, okay. It's fine. Yeah. It's just like, why is he doing that? When yeah, because it's just yeah. Let me try it right now. But, why is he be dumb? That's the well, that's the real you know question. why. <laughs> this, there we go. So, uh, hey, look at that. Oh, well, that's crazy, that's much huh? more convenient. Okay, now um, go back to this so people can see the list for a little bit. Hey, hey, hey. What do you guys? What have you oh, guys also, been playing? Oh, uh, this uh, Tarkov wipe happened. Playing. Yeah. Uh, what have you I've been, been playing a lot of Tarkov what? and the finals. Living? Okay. Uh, yeah. Hey, what what fighter. I've been checking out some fun games. DNF Duel was uh, free on the Epic Games Store the other day, so me and my oh, friends played yeah, that. Yeah, that's, that's, that's expensive for that game. <laughs> it's fun! It's aiding. No, it's no. like Marvel. It's fun. No, uh, you never said that about that game. Yeah, shut the fuck up. Uh, <laughs> I'm playing, oh, I'm playing a ROM hack game. of the uh, Pokemon TCG on Game Boy that replaces the cards with slightly newer cards. Oh, so, what's that no. like? It's fun because it like completely mixes up, you know, like like you go through that Jeff, you still haven't played it, right? Yeah. No. Okay. So it is like an RPG, like the traditional Pokemon games. And so I've played through that RPG a million times, mixing up the cards, like it replaces all of them with just it's Gen 2. It's not super right. newer. But just even that is like, wow, I don't know what this person's gonna have. I don't know. You know, like it completely changes the way I build my decks and everything. It's it's awesome. I love it. That's yeah, that's really cool. I, I um should spend more time with like randomizers and stuff because yeah, I, I replay games so much. I should start doing that. Yeah, if it's a game you really love, randomizer is a good way to go back yeah. to it. Definitely. Okay. Got myself a celebration beer. <laughs> okay, Just... okay. Now Mike's back. I got a question. What game do you got? Oh, he did the thing. Very satisfying. <laughs> what game do you think people are going to bring up the most of? Oh, you put oh, this on gosh. the list? Oh, no, on bad. the list. On the list. Trick. Well, it's going to be uh, Ghost Trick, trick but... Um... <laughs> Maybe Saints Row. But there's a, Saints there's Row a little bit. Saints Row. From, actually, there's a lot to choose from. Some people will be upset about Pokemon. Yeah. Nobody will be upset about Skyrim or Portal. No. Uh, well, the real ones upset. know with Pokemon, though. They're like, oh, okay, they finally put but, like, yeah, but, the but, Pokemon yeah, game My audience will know with Saints Row. Like, because Saints Row was very popular with Giant Bomb, so like uh, that's gonna play well there. 
Okay. The realist okay. ones will know about Ghost Trick, and they. That's why I think it would be Saints Row, yeah, because like Ghost Trick is like a cult classic. Saints Row is so gonna I'm get curious. a lot of heat from the my wider audience on Twitter for oh, sure. People are gonna yes. get upset that that's in a not uh, uh, and not freaking. But Batman but that that's like the, that's like the early game of the year lore from Giant Bomb is like Saints Row should have beat Skyrim. Like that's they Saints Row the Throw should Saints Row the Third should have been better than Skyrim mm. on that list, and everyone was really mad that it didn't. I don't um, even like Skyrim, and I don't know about that one, Chief. Oh, Skyrim. Saints Row the Third is fantastic. It's so good. Yeah, it was. It was all right. Oh, my God. Never mind. Get out. You know what? Go back to your hole. Uh, all <laughs> right. Go back to thinking Marvel's Capcom 3 looks good. Oh, God. <laughs> it looks good. All right. Here we go. You guys ready? Yeah. No. Yes. And we're back. Uh, Mike, what have you been playing? What have I been playing? Um, oh, I've, I've been playing that God of War Ragnarok Valhalla thing. Oh, yeah. But I, I, played like a, I played a couple hours of that, and I might go back to play some more. I was enjoying that. That's pretty good. It's very good. I mean, it, it's just a really smart way of implementing that kind of mode in that game. And in a way that is still like continuing the narrative uh, in some fun ways. It does have some fun callbacks to the Greek adventures, which I enjoy. Uh, I, I I think I made a mistake, though, because my first playthrough, I played like three hours and I was completing all my runs first try. I was like, OK, this is maybe a little too easy. I'll bump the difficulty up one notch. And I don't know if the game just also naturally got harder because I completed a few runs uh, or what. But as soon as I did that and it was, was not supposed to be a big increase, the game's been kicking my butt mm. since then. Like I went from three runs, like three or four runs in a row without really dying to just try to complete one more run. And maybe it's the last run for all I know. I don't know. And that's why it's so hard. Now, in some ways, I'm happier this way that it uh, has been uh, harder because that kind of was my complaint. I was like, oh, this is fun, but it feels like too easy. It doesn't feel like it feels like I can win no matter what build I get. Now I'm just struggling to even find a build or maybe I'm just not good enough yet. Who knows? But yeah, I think this is really impressive, especially for free DLC. That's nuts. Yep, it's um my favorite trend in gaming right now. It's uh you know Hitman Three Freelancer. This um the you know the the, the mode in The Last of Us, which I haven't tried yet, but I'll give it a shot. Um, I, I just love this idea of taking all of this content and building a mode that you could effectively. I, I know God of War Valhalla has a sort of uh, an ending you get to, and then you're done. But ideally, you could go back and play this again because who knows what the next build you're going to get is going to be like. It could be completely different again. So, yeah, I'm uh, a big fan of this idea, and I think they implemented it really, really well. Um, and honestly, the storytelling stuff of being very Hades-like of every time you get back, most of the times when you get back, you get a little bit more story and the things get developed. I think that's really well done as well. So it's just all, all through and through very impressive. Yeah, that's exactly what for it. I'm... Very impressed that this thing exists. Uh, you know, incredible job by Santa Monica. The, the whole city of Santa Monica. Yes. Not the I mean, it takes a city. Absolutely. To make a good mm -hmm. video game. Um, I've been playing. I never wrote them down. You know, I, I beat that campaign of um, a Steam World build. And, you know, at a certain point, it's like you're kind of going through the motions with this with a city builder, especially one where it's like, hey, the goal here is to get these parts for the spaceship and launch the spaceship. And, um, the the sort of um, tier uh, progression of okay you got to satisfy the needs of this these residents so then you can then upgrade them to the next thing so they go from just being residents to engineers and then engineers to aristocrats and aristocrats to scientists and it's like oh the scientists are top tier so where are you going to go well no you have to make all of them happy so then they can build the rocket fuel to launch the ship and it's like okay so it's pretty similar and all of the buildings you're building are. Um, they are funneling into those those needs, but I, I found that uh, it's not like something um, like Civ, and I think a lot of other city building games where it's like it sounds like Anno to me. Yeah, it, it, gets, it really tickles my fancy. Yes, it, 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 I, but I, I, I did like look into it after you mentioned that last time, and it's like I think that's probably right. Does Anno have a thing where like when you put a building down, it feels like it's doing its own thing? Because that here it's like I, at a certain point the city just feels like a, a big blob of stuff. That, yeah, um, that sounds like it. No, okay, yeah. okay, okay. And, and it's like, I, you know, I didn't feel that way until the very end. So it's like up to that point, it's like, you know, th this is fine. I, that's very satisfying. But by the end, I'm like, okay, yeah, it's just, just kind of a big blob, blob. And I don't have any attachments really to any specific building or anything like that. Um, and, and uh, you know, the um, underground stuff that I mentioned last time where it has some of the uh, um, 
a tower defense elements. That stuff never got annoying. It was just very straightforward. At a certain point, you are always getting attacked. Uh, but if you have your defenses set up properly, it kind of just takes care of itself. And so that's kind of nice to be like, I don't even have to go check in on that level because I know my uh, infantry men are going to go out and they're going to attack. And then if they uh, break through those lines, uh, the big laser beams will take them out. The big electrical gun will take them out. And then the uh, infantrymen will respawn and be able to fight back. And then once once the fighting dies down, the mechanics will fix everything and fix up all the people. And that floor will be completely set. So you don't have to actually get distracted from what you're doing if you have your defenses set up properly. properly and I like that. Um, but yeah, I, I you know, the last underground level of opening up these spaces and building bridges. Uh, I really liked that element of it of, okay, this one feels much more like I'm exploring a dungeon to a certain extent. And uh, that was pretty good, but I definitely was ready to wrap it up when I got through that first campaign. And like I said, I don't know if I'm going to do a, a, another run with the game. Maybe, maybe I'll get the urge to do it. But right now I'm like, ah, I'm going to consider that game beaten. I won one run of it. That's a beaten game. Um, I also started Asgard's Wrath 2 for the MetaQuest 3, Mike, the 10 oh, out of 10 yeah. game from IGN. Yeah, people seem really high on this. And I get why, because it's basically, uh, it's like God of War, but in VR, uh, very much where like you get an ax that looks like a hammer and you can throw it and then you press a button and you whip your hand back and it flies right back in your hand. And that feels as good as it sounds. Uh, it is yeah. such a cool feeling. Uh, and you, you, there's like wall running in VR, which I think some people are like, that's going to make me sick. It actually works just fine. It's just a pretty cool action game with some like light puzzle solving stuff here and there. But going into a new room, having to explore it and be like, all right, there's some pots over there. I want to break and just throwing my ax at it and then whipping it back. It's that's like really satisfying. That is like a 10 out of 10 game mechanic on its own. So building a whole game around that and making a bunch of fun stuff to do with that, uh, that that's what they did. And that's a very satisfying game. The boss fights are actually pretty cool too. Like I'm fighting a giant Griffin and this is like the first five minutes of the game. Uh, this, this part. So no spoilers, I guess if people care about Asgard's wrath, two spoilers. Um, but it's like a giant you know, griffin and it's like hanging over you and uh, you, you, like it fires fireballs at you. So you swing at those. It, that's, uh, the, those fly back at the griffin. It gets stunned and then you can approach it like by da dashing towards it. And then you just stab it with the sword and it feels like I'm stabbing it with the sword. And that's very cool as well. So it's like a big real game. Um, I don't know if, how it really stacks up to Alex. I think Alex is probably still more impressive generally. Uh, but this is a really fun, solid, real VR game. And I'm pretty impressed by it. Do you, how do you feel about all the Norse stuff? Like, I definitely have some Norse fatigue. Oh, definitely fatigue, yeah, right? No. Yes. Oh, and it's yeah. like Loki this and Odin that, and there's <laughs> Thor, a Thor, and it's another version of Thor, and it's like, oh my God, really? We're doing this again. <laughs> how uh, many Thors do we need? I, I, I don't need this many Thors. I really don't. Um, But it's also not like, it doesn't ruin anything on its own. It's a fine take on all those things, but I am definitely tired of it. Um, I, I will say if you are trying to make a game on the cheap though, and yet you want to like have stuff that feels like, well, I know what this is and I have a connection to these things. Norse mythology goes a long way toward accomplishing that. So I don't blame them for, for going this track. You know, it, it does do the thing also where what people are asking God of War to do, it goes to Egypt. Like, so you're like doing shit in Egypt with like Egyptian gods and stuff. So um, that's a pretty cool tech. And I guess that means uh, it's going to be more difficult for God of War to do it, or maybe that won't matter. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's impressive and I'm going to keep playing it. I still don't know how much I need real VR games though. Even if it is like a really solid someone, I'm like, I would, I think I'd rather just be playing a video game on my couch or on my beanbag with the steam deck. Um, this is great and all, but I'm not going to, I'm not going to get done with Asgard's Wrath 2 and be like, all right, what's next? I'm like, no, that was a fun use of this MetaQuest 3 thing that I got from, from Facebook that they sent to me. And cool. Uh, that's, that was, that. now that headset made sense to actually try and mess around with. And I don't need another one of those necessarily, but maybe I'll feel different after I play more of it. Um, and then uh, I've been playing a little more uh, Case of the Golden Idol. Um, my save got corrupted i don't know if people rem might remember this uh my, my save got corrupted because i was playing er in the early days on the steam deck and something got messed up with the steam save and so i lost all my progress and i kind of didn't want to like go back and redo everything i'm at a point now where i'm like i don't remember all these things so it's fun uh, once again to solve that stuff and now i'm further into the game than i ever was and basically near the original ending ending of that um 
and it's still really good. And now I have two sets of DLC to get through, which are like whole new campaigns on their own. And that they, that studio said they have a new game coming that they announced at Summer Game or at uh, the Game Awards. So I'm just fully back on board with these games. And it's uh, definitely, yeah, Chance of Sinar, um, uh, uh, this game, and uh, uh, Return of the Obra Den are just this genre of figuring things out in your head that I just am super into right now. So, yeah, big fan of Case of the Golden Idol. Uh, I really like its style still of the, the hand-drawn art and these static scenes of just gruesome murders, uh, but it, it's kind of cartoony in a fun way. I don't know, big fan of Case of the Golden Idol. But that's it for me, Mike. I don't know. Yeah, I uh, I also have been playing uh, the Dead Space remake, which is a weird thing to play at the end of this year since it came out at the beginning. It feels like a really long time ago. This is actually a game club game. Um, God, I wish I put this one to come out, though. It is very good. Big surprise. Uh, I, I even liked the original Dead Space. I did play through it even right. back when it was my coward age. But God, this game does just look gorgeous now. Everything that was fun about that original, just just like giving you that gun that shoots like in lines and having those very obvious thin limbs to shoot off. I love that. That could be the only weapon in the game, honestly, and I almost maybe would even like it. Better yeah, for real. Um, but, you know, all the added stuff that they did add, like there is a lot more of those that zero G stuff and it feels really neat in here. I love the zero G. Like it's not disorienting actually. It somehow controls really fluidly, um, and it's just it's just a neat. It is a very good spaceship game, right? You want a game just like set on a spaceship, a space station that kind of have those like '80s or '70s dirty sci-fi aesthetic to it. I don't know if there's anything better uh, than this. So I'm I'm quite enjoying it. Uh, what a, what a great year for. The, that kind of third person survival horror style game right yep good stuff yeah i think um the industry is realizing that is a well they can keep going back to over and over because the audience that's into those into those kind of games they don't they don't get sick of them they just want mm -hmm. more and more and more and it's an audience that's getting bigger all the time right. and resident evil is oh, obviously the biggest proof of that but yeah it's not a, it's not a genre like some giant rpg thing where that's the game you're gonna then play for 100 hours yeah you know you beat these games in like 10 12 15 hours and Maybe you'll play, go and play a few more times. And even that at most is going to be a 40 hour thing. And then, yeah, you want a new one. All right, uh, Mike, I think that's time to wrap it up. What do you say? Yeah. Hey, you know what, Jeff? What a year. We got a few more super chats. Let's, Let's hit them. Those first, but, but first, but uh, man, yeah, we, a lot of stuff was was going on this year. It was so much fun to do that uh, with you and with the community. Definitely. Uh, we're, we're, we're definitely on a lot of stuff now. It's shocking how much stuff we're on. <laughs> but this was the OG uh, Game Mess Decides, formerly Games Beat Decides, way back when. And it's still always a highlight of my week doing this show with you and getting to hang out with everybody. Yeah, likewise. I always look forward to it. It's uh, I'm, I'm glad that it's still so much fun to do. And you're right. The community's been great. Uh, everyone's been uh, uh, very cool as we are on more stuff. So it just means a lot that we get to keep doing this and uh, we'll do more of it next year, including, you know, I think next week we're, uh, we should get you over here. We'll do our game of the year episode. I've been, uh, yeah, man, I've been writing down but... some uh, categories uh, that I'll share with you. Uh, but I think okay. we also, I think we also had a thread where I said we, we have a thread going on. Yeah. We had a thread going on on the, for the podcast producer where they send in their recommendations for uh, game of the year, like the categories. Okay, uh, perfect. Yes. And so yeah. we'll, we'll check in with so... y'all. If you have any recommendations, getting that, uh, Get in there if you're a Patreon right. member and uh, recommend some categories for us. When is a we're gonna have a fantasy critic recap pretty soon here too? I yeah, imagine, yeah, we should. Uh, we'll Wait, definitely. The, yeah, we'll we'll work in on that for uh, early right. January for us, I believe. Yep. I know how this works. Though. I got second place this time. I'll take it. So I'm. Gonna oh, I'm no, oh, fantasy critic. Yes, that <laughs> thing that I totally didn't forget about. <laughs> fantasy critic, yeah, yeah, and then yeah. we'll. I don't want to hear any more shit from it about it from you ever again. That's what I want. <laughs> yeah, how's uh, rebirth going, Mike? You having fun with that game it, that came out this year? I, I dropped it. I dropped it and picked up new things because I actually know how to play fantasy critic. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Hold the fucking phone. Jeff, do you remember when, well, not even like six months ago, this guy was like, I don't know how to do any of this stuff. Why are you? And really then he got second. So what are we going to do about this? Shit? Like, yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, he's on my side. Yeah. He, <laughs> he did way better burn, than burn me. Burn them all down. Burn down both of the leagues. We don't need any of this yeah. stuff. <laughs> uh, we also will get a recap from Wolf about our uh, Metacritic predictions right. for the quarter. Wait, what do you mean I got third? I got third? What are you talking about? Oh, never mind. I'm not going to talk. I'm not going to defend a loser. Jeez. Wait, I thought I had a very solid second place. That's a 
Yeah, wait, wait, I'm at fourth? What the hell happened? <laughs> Actually, I can't what? be associated with you anymore, Mike. I didn't know you were that bad at it. Jesus. Oh, my God. I thought it was... What did the, what happened to the Achara Wolf all of a sudden? Oh, and Charlie got Asgard's ref, too. That oh, was my God, pickup. really? That's a hell of a pickup. Yeah, no wonder. That's like I right. got like a 92 on Metacritic or something so, like that. That's like, like a 93. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, so. All right, well, that'll okay, do it. Okay, well, there you go, then. That'll do it. Uh, all right, well, anyways, it was a lot of fun, and I'm coming for everybody next year for sure. Let's get to the rest of these super chats. Please. How about that? Um, ba Bander SN says, have either of you heard about the new Good Feel game Mameda no Bakaru. It's Japan only and a spiritual successor to Goemon. It's been making splashes on the Nintendo Twitter today. I, I think I've heard a little bit. What is this one? This. What is this I, called now? Mama, it's Japanese. Mameda no Bakaru. Okay, I see it now. Like All right. that. Interesting. Yeah, it's a. Uh, uh, choo -choo -choo. So, yeah, this is the Goemon spiritual successor. And um, this game does actually look pretty fun. Oh, look at that. that. That does yeah. look cool. That does look pretty cool, so I might look into it. Uh, Giovanni Di Giorgio, man. I, by the way, I saw Ferrari, which is just was so Italian. Just the Italianness of it. <laughs> Most Italian nice. movie ever made. It was a pretty Italian movie. <laughs> uh, also, surprisingly gruesome movie. Uh, but just a heads up, if you want to go see that. Yeah, but Giovanni says, "Yo, let's say that Grubway TM sandwiches will open at the end of this week. What is your signature sandwich, and what kind of sandwich?" Would you make in honor of Mike, Sean, and Christian? All right, Jeff, what's your signature? Yeah, my, sandwich? my signature sandwich would be uh, it would be a tuna grub style, and that would be me just stealing the recipe from Jimmy John's, which is they put <laughs> soy sauce in the tuna fish, and it's actually really, really good. But you put that on toasted wheat bread uh, with some jalapenos, and that would be my sandwich. God, that sounds fantastic! I could eat that right now. Okay, what would my sandwich be? Uh, you, I would just just steal the Italian BMT. You would just be that from from uh with a lot of yellow mustard. I don't think you like yellow mustard, but I would. Yeah, that sounds that racist. Tomato. I don't want to slice the tomato. Okay, no tomato, no tomato. You know, uh, I'm just a meat cheese sauce kind of guy. Yeah. What like could I put onion on there? Is there something? No. Okay. What is like the closest thing to onion and tomato that we could put on there? Could we put like a pepper on there? Like a you could put um, a pesto sauce on there. How about that? <laughs> okay. Uh, salt and pepper, oil and vinegar. There we go. That's all we'd put on there. Um, uh, Sean, what, uh, what's Sean would be, um, what's a sandwich for a pervert? Yeah. What's a sandwich for a pervert? We'll just wow. put some fur on oh, there. Like an Italian hot and beef. That's a, that's a really wet pervert sandwich, yeah. right? <laughs> yeah. That hot, uh, like a French, that hot. a French dip or something like that. Something yeah. you dip, it gets something soggy and wet. dunked. Yeah. It's just disgusting <laughs> and dripping. <laughs> okay. And then, uh, let's see. Christian would be, uh, I don't know, something spicy cause, uh, Latin food. Yeah. yeah. Uh, sure. I'll take it. We'll call the sandwich I, something spicy. Something yeah, spicy. It's just something spicy. It's a, it's, a, it's a piece of the pepper. It's just red pepper. Yeah, you just a it. big pepper on on bread. That's it. And you just bite yeah, into there it. There you go. A Charter Wolf says, I fully understand liking a Charter 2 more than 3. I have a lot of nostalgia for 3, so that's why it's my favorite. Both are incredible to me. I would like to play 3 again. Um, gosh, my favorite memory of 3 is going to the E3 when they're showing it off in that theater that looked like that cargo plane. That was really cool. Shigeru Mimoto says, I hope you criminals had a good Christmas. Excuse me, Christmas. Thank you, Shiggy. Sorry, Shiggy. This beer is making me a little gassy. I've been spending the week trying to get a hold of Zack Snyder to direct the Kirby movie. Cool Chris DDD is unlike anything you've ever seen. <laughs> Happy 2024. Okay, well, you, you would be fine if Chris Pratt was King DDD, though, right? Oh, yeah, of course. Because, like, yeah. now at this point in my, in my life, King DDD just sounds like a wild... Um, uh, Yosem not Yosemite Sam. What's the, the chicken's name? The rooster's name from, um, oh, yeah, yeah, uh, Loghorn Leghorn. Yeah, yeah, Log Foghorn, Foghorn, Leghorn. Foghorn, Foghorn Leghorn. Leghorn. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I said, I said, I said, boy, I said, yeah, and that's basically King I did not feel good saying that, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Something problematic in there. I don't think it actually is, but it sounded that way. I don't like saying the word boy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yes, never. There it is. That's the problem. Uh, hey, the bronze are going to the playoffs. How about that? Congratulations. That, that that is really incredible. Both the Lions and the Browns in the playoffs at the same time. Yeah, what a what a, what a world we look at us. <laughs> look at us. Thought? Yeah, who, uh, not me. Uh and then now Greg says what happens in 2024 first Nintendo dropping a Switch 2 trailer with people playing in a roof uh or a game as Hall of Fame segment love the show. We <laughs> thought about doing one for here then we kind of uh 
didn't have time. For it's it's uh, been next, a busy week. Week's yes, going to be busy. <laughs> a couple weeks, we'll get back to yeah, okay, that. All fame is a special treat. There's other segments I want. I want to do like uh, shit hot and king hot, whatever yeah. we did. And... We'll, uh, we'll definitely do like a we'll do a Mount Rushmore before we do a, the next game of the year thing. Also. Yeah, yeah, we'll, we'll we'll sprinkle in some of those other ones. I want to do uh, the, the gaming dude of the though. year, but that could be a game of the year category. So we'll uh, we'll have that. Uh, all right, I think that's it. We are uh, they caught up. Uh, okay, last thing uh, in Phil Theobald's uh, game of the year list on Giant Bomb, he mentions this SD Shin Common Rider Rumble for Nintendo yeah. Switch and Steam, and I I was gonna get it for Steam, but I think it's only in the Japanese Steam store. Is that like relatively easy to get games from? Does anyone know? If you do, let me know. Uh, but otherwise, I guess I'll just buy this for the. Uh, Japanese Switch store because I have a Japanese Switch account when I ever have to buy games. Because I've done it before, Jeff. We we can we work on that if you want uh, to. Okay, this sounds good. Uh, because this got Shin Godzilla in it, and you could play a Shin Godzilla. Oh. So I'm gonna. Oh shit! Yeah. I need to see Shin Godzilla because I somehow missed that, what? and some people like that even more than minus uh minus one, and I really liked minus one, so I gotta get to that. That's pretty good. Yeah. Uh, All right, I'm gonna hit this button, Mike. Uh, it's gonna go fast. So tell people where they could find you on the internet. Well, Tokoto, you know where to find me, but my top 10 list on Giant Bomb is going to be up tomorrow at 2 p.m. Eastern. So yeah, thanks for working on that, Mike. List. Appreciate it. Thank you. How about you, Sean? Uh, When's yours go up? Uh, first of all, I think Mike is wrong. I'm pretty sure his is up at noon Eastern, and I think I'm going to sneak mine in an hour ahead. Ed. I'm looking at it right now. It says 2 p.m. Eastern on the site, so I'm just saying. It's a uh, uh, time, oh, specific time zones. Yeah, I was going to say time crazy. zones. Yes. I hate the CMS so much, Jeff. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh-huh. Uh, we, we found out that if you use one of the images on our library, it deletes them. It just deletes it from the, the server. So that's been pretty cool. Christian's uh, top 10 is up. You can read that on the site right now. Oh, they just give that to anybody these days. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank you. The music's really loud. Thanks for listening, everybody. Bye. <laughs> We're coming.